Well, we got to figure out some new starting deal to talk about, but be, because we can't use the same exact spill that we use every week. What? Well, see, I almost said the word. I almost said the word, but I was going to say the word to describe the word that is normally said, and I almost was going to say it to describe it. So I, I'm not doing it. I'm not saying it. But I didn't use a word we always use. I didn't do it. You yeah. didn't either. We're, we're not going to do it, and, and if I am if I do, you got to say ding, and that'll be my <laughs> trigger for the Pavlovian experiment thing for me not to do it. But Oh, are you triggered? I don't want to say that. I, I'm not going to say that because somebody could use that against me in the future. Well, they could use a lot of things I've said against me well, in the future. Oh, I mean, there's a lot of people being triggered around Bozier, it seems, today. I mean, I'm just wondering if you've joined the crowd. Are you one of these triggered people in Bozier? Triggers, <laughs> triggers everywhere. <laughs> they are. Uh, it, it's been a very interesting past two days for me because yesterday... I was dressing down the Caddo Commission on the Earl G. boat ramp closure situation at, as a guest of our good friend Chris Crackman, who is, you know, Caddo District 1 Commissioner now. And so he invited me to go to the Caddo Commission workshop, so I, I did a presentation there and I got some interesting feedback. But today is even more interesting than me trespassing across the river into Caddo. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. But but I am interested. And in, so you went to Caddo. I, I'm assuming the parish, not the city. But you went to the Caddo Commission, and you were like speaking over there and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I got on my soapbox for. Uh, they gave me 15 minutes as a guest uh, speaker, and I got on my soapbox and uh, about the ramp closure that they arbitrarily did. I'll be publishing that video probably tomorrow, and then I'll share it out on Bozier Watch. So folks can watch it, watch it. But look, I'll, I'll give Cato credit. Their meetings, they're very respectful because I was professionally firm with them in my presentation. And I have to say they were unbelievably respectful. It just didn't seem to be the shenanigans that we have over here and with the police jury. So oh, I'll definitely there, give them credit. Word my pen. There's one of the words. Ding said shenanigans. Ding, 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 ding. And that's my favorite word. That's one of the marks. I got a mark down for you yeah. right there. But anyway, so so Cato, I, I was just really pleased. I saw our good friend John Settle. He was over there. And then I had a couple of friends of mine, Megan from Drift In uh, Landing and Bait Shop up uh, around Oil City. She came down to, to watch. And Dan Fulgram from the Cato Lake Association, he came down. And anyway. It, it was actually a good meeting. Well, I, I you know, you showed me a clip earlier the, uh, of you talking over there, and I thought you did quite well. I mean, you you didn't uh, lose it. You didn't uh, go to, you didn't snap. I mean, so I'm proud of you. I mean, it seems us Bozier people are just, we're losing uh -oh. it over here. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're, we're, folks, we're going to get more into the Charter Commission. I don't know if it was actually a workshop, if it was a meeting, what the hell it actually was. It was a soap opera, I know that. But we're going to get into some more of that because I'll just say right off the bat that if I was a disinterested person that was attending that meeting, so let's say I didn't know anything about term limits or, or any of the other things that go on, since I can't use my favorite word, uh, any of the other things that go on in Bozier, I would have come away from that meeting believing or being on the side of our beloved, and I say that with all sarcasm, do, our beloved city attorney who really might not be the city attorney at certain meetings. I don't know how he's arbitrarily figuring that out, but I would have believed him. So I would counsel our friends who are watching the show next time, be a little better prepared. <laughs> when you go into a, a debate with an attorney, it's the old court saying, never ask a question that you don't already know the answer to, and you can anticipate 10 other questions and 10 other answers ahead of time. That's the secret. Well, <clears throat> well, if, if I'm going to be the guy, you know, we, we try to, I hate to say be fair and balanced because we're not, we're biased. Everybody has their biases and we are, I mean, 
But uh, if I'm going to have to play the other side of this thing, if you're saying that uh, Richard Ray had a grand performance, I, I'll i gladly take the other side of the equation and say, not so fast, Dano. I think there was a little more to the story. Yeah. I know that's not the, I know that's yeah. not the case, but I, I think what Rex is trying to say, you know, when you guys see what we're going to show you tonight, you're going to come away. You, you possibly are going to come away with a perception. You could just watch nothing but what transpired at the meeting today and not have any idea of what has transpired behind the scenes and what has gone on. And you might come away with uh, an opinion and that opinion may be skewed a little bit. It doesn't mean it's right. I mean, it, as, as, one of the commission members, uh, wife of a city judge, police juror says, you know, uh, that the term limits people should give both sides of the story. Well, I tell you what, there are two sides of the story. And I think we're going to honor her wishes and we're going to tell both sides of the story today. Yeah, we are. And, and like I said, I want to throw that out there from the get go. But. There's, of course, always two sides to every story. And as the little princess told us, we should always tell both sides of everything. And so we're absolutely going to, I want to say dress down Richard Ray, but that is just a disgusting image in my head now. Almost kind of like the, the one in the background of our show graphic. So I'm not going to use that term. We're just going to tell everybody how the cows well, ate the cabbage today. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. I mean, look, Richard Ray, he he made some statements, he made some points, and either he's accurate or he's inaccurate. It's it's one way or the other, and I'm going to do my best not to say which one it is. I think we're just going to provide you uh two two sides to this coin and you make your own decision. You you form your own decision as to what's accurate and what's inaccurate. I mean, I, I think that's well, the best thing we can do. As Richard Ray tells us all the time, words matter. Remember that statement. Let let those two words echo through your heads as you're listening and watching tonight. Words matter. And we're about to go to the break here in just a second, do our countdown and all that. <laughs> if there was ever a show besides the first Bozier stuff that you wanted to tag some friends in and get them to watch, it's definitely going to be tonight. Tonight is the night where you need to call your friends and tell them, hey, y'all need to listen to this. Yeah, because you're you're going to get a dose of reality um, tonight. The, this one here is, I, I don't know, this one might get right up there with the uh, Zamboni. I don't know. Maybe. It's Yeah, it may even go beyond the Zamboni. That's that's a pretty bold statement, too. There were lots of bold statements made today. All right. What do you say we go ahead and do our intro and countdown and all that kind of good stuff? Folks, y'all kind of know the drill. It takes about three minutes for all this stuff to play. That gives y'all time to tag folks, text folks, share this out, tag your elected officials, your benevolent overlords, do all those sorts of things, make you a stiff drink, and... Pop you some popcorn real quick. I'm going to hit the button, and we will be back in about three minutes. Y'all get ready. Osier Watch and Louisiana Watch reach thousands of people each and every week across YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Plus, we have expanded into live shows and videos under the Outdoor News on Facebook and YouTube. We have a very dedicated and growing audience around the regional, Bossier, and Louisiana area. We reach over 60,000 people each month across all platforms. Even the Bossier City Mayor's Office admits to watching us. really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys. Believe it or not, I really watch you guys all the time. And I appreciate your platform and how you kind of put it out. As citizen journalists, we provide professionally produced live shows with consistent scheduling and interview interesting people, give our opinions, and yes, get on our soapboxes from time to time. Thousands of engaging comments weekly, you can rest assured as an advertiser and partner, your company or organization's brand will be shown and promoted consistently and professionally. 
whether in our opening countdown or the background graphics of our shows or on our website, you can rest assured that your brand will reach our expanding audience and increase your visibility. We offer flexible, no-hassle advertising options, and we can work within any budget. Contact us now through our advertisers page on our websites or directly through social media. Let's get your brand recognized. If folks knew a lot of the back office on the politicians that they think walk on water, uh, they would be shocked. You know, there's an old wound from a knife in my back that just is giving me heck lately and it's just really irritating so I have to kind of wiggle around a little bit. Well, I, I've not heard my name in stable or Baton Rouge in stable in the same sentence in a long time. I titled it a shot across the bow of the good old boys. Just, you know, they feel helpless, they don't feel heard, they have nowhere to turn. Some Republicans as well believe that government has the answers. And let me tell y'all something, I don't know anything government does well, nothing. And aren't there laws that say that you have public meetings so that the public can have accountability of their elected officials? They're making a little bit of progress, but I would definitely have to give uh, give the race to Caddo Parish right now. Yeah. I don't know, is there anybody from Plain Dealing watching, you think? As a member of the media, I'm very concerned about the what I've just heard. Did you or did you not requisition uh, money to fight against this or for you? We hire a, uh, a lobbyist and it costs us fifteen thousand dollars. We were opposed to HB HB six thousand. So for this week, folks, the cockroach of the week, according to Bozier Watch and Duke Lowry and Rex Moncrief, is Raymond Croon's legislative assistant, <laughs> Allie Feaster Smith. Thank you, Allie. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not thinking Star Wars at all. I'm thinking <laughs> zombie apocalypse. No way. Okay, it was not okay. You know it wasn't David Montgomery. David okay. ain't going to jump off in there with Chris. Okay. He's going to do it. He'd soon spit on him as he would even look at him. Man, this is a Mickey D's Krispy Kreme wheat. Didn't you know? Who, who's <laughs> paying y'all? And if you're driving on the roads, are you safe? Uh, it's on the road, yeah. Well, I know you're on the road, but I mean, is this all <laughs> folks coming from the border down there? Yeah, it's going to the border. It's actually it's going to Mexico, the buses. Doesn't mean they interpret it the same way that I do. For instance, the Second Amendment. I take it very literally. That's been interpreted different ways in the court system all the way up to SCOTUS. Yeah, that's only going to cause more division that he claims he doesn't want to cause. And it's only going to cause more suspicion. We're still right now combined on both pages in YouTube at 264 people watching. That is amazing, Folk Coleman Project, the Walker Place deal, through conscious shocking actions. The purpose of their actions was to stop plaintiffs, being the Earl Coleman and, and associated groups or not, from developing Walker Place. But here's a key thing, which in turn would enrich sitting city council members Scott Irwin and David Montgomery Jr. You hit the button. Does that mean that uh, people are like seeing us sitting here talking? Well, chatting? in theory, you know, it's an every week thing. We got to double check and make sure it's like a miracle any of this actually works. This live broadcast is brought to you by. The Outdoor News, fishing and outdoors for our area. Acadiana Mortgage, over 25 years in the mortgage business. Pelican Training and Consulting, reach out to Julie Ferris. Smarter Geek, making technology easier. And folks sharing information and watching out. Now, grab your popcorn and a drink. Here we go. I'm going to say it. I'm not going to use the same expression I use every show for 200 plus shows. Well, I'm glad you're not. Well, hey, I want to start off by saying my text message is already blowing up. It's well, already I didn't take up. long. It, we hadn't even talked about anybody yet. We hadn't talked about nothing and people are already messaging me. I mean, that's fine. I, I'm not I'm not mad. It just, it's just it's going to be one of them nights, I can tell. We haven't insulted anybody yet. I mean, what's the deal? Yeah, you know, I had somebody tell me that the assumptions out there that we just, uh, 
that we just we, we hate all politicians. Well, that's nearly true. <laughs> well, it might be. It is for me. I, true, I, but it's not true. <laughs> I really? can think of some good politicians. I, th- I can think of some politicians I don't like who have I said nearly really done some done some good things. I said nearly. This is a glass half full or glass half empty, and I'm an eternal <laughs> optimist most of the time. But my opinion of politicians is the glass is two thirds or heck nine tenths empty already. Yeah, but listen, here's the thing. If you run for an office, whereas you have to be elected, that by definition makes you a politician. So since you have historically ran for a public office, which was on the peck, therefore you are a past politician. Past being the operative word there. Thank you for words matter, Mr. Lowry. I'm, 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 I, but I was correct, and what I didn't lie about what I said. I, you, I said you were a pal. Hold on, but so, all right. So if we're going to go down that pathway, we have to tell the whole story. Remember, like we've been told <laughs> at today's meeting. So the story is: I'm not running for office, but I get a phone call with three people, three or four people on that call. I won't mention any names, but I think you were on that call that literally demanded that I run for that office. So I don't want to share too much of that story, but I went kicking and screaming. Well, I don't remember who I was on the call and I don't remember the call, but you're probably right. But I'm just glad, you know, you, you succumb to the pressure, the peer pressure and you did it. <laughs> hey, I was even a bureaucrat for temporarily or for a little bit. I was on the board of election supervisors. I think that qualifies me as a bureaucrat. But, but look. I don't hate politicians. I mean, I you know, I mean, look, there's policy. I don't ag- I don't agree with some policy and some things that people put out there, but what I I find the most egregious is when politicians uh, are not completely straightforward with the public and they and they go out of their way to attempt to deceive them and make them think that they believe See, one thing when they don't at all. Hold on a minute. You keep using that that nicey, nice, nice word like deceive or untruthful or whatever. I just say they flat out lie. I, I don't fall to that, you know, subscription of, oh, we, we hear politicians say it all the time, my friend so-and-so, my friend so-and-so, my friend across the aisle, blah, blah, blah. That's why I can't be a politician because I'm not politically correct at all. This is, this right here, this stuff we've done for 212 plus shows is right where I need to be. And I think, because you have a God given talent for it too, well, I think you need to be too, Mr. Lowry. But, but by virtue of what we do, there is the air out there that we hate politicians. We don't like any politicians. And, you know, there's just that thing. That's why we do what okay. we do. And that's, uh, that's not it at all. Well, again, I'll restate what I did previously, and unlike our lawyer friend that we're going to show here in a minute, I do happen to be able to recall exactly what I said, and I said that's not entirely true. So I mostly do not have a good opinion of most politicians. There are very, very few that I have a decent opinion of. Well, <clears throat> politics is a dirty sport. And, uh, you know, look, I'm glad we kind of had this dialogue because I've said it on the show and I'll say it again. I think uh, debate is how we progress. And I think that we have to we have to we have to disagree. I mean, yeah, sure. there, there is a politician. He was he always says, you'll know who I'm talking about. A lot of you will know who I'm talking about when I say this. But he he always used to say iron sharpens iron. And I think he quoted that out of the Bible a little bit or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, um, you know, but I think that's right. And I think that's the problem with our politics as a whole. And it's and, and I know you and I agree with this because we've had this dialogue before, but I don't think that we have had enough discourse. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm sick of Washington because all they do is argue or what have you. But do they really, or do they do they really argue on? You they know, put we, on the show. Are... They they exactly. put on a show just like we do every Tuesday night and sometimes Thursdays and Mondays on the outdoor news <laughs> sales pitch there. Uh, but 
they put on a show just like we do, because how many times do have we been involved with politicians, been involved ourselves, where they hate so-and-so, or they won't say that, but they strongly disagree with so-and-so, and, and you would think they're worst enemies in public, but behind the scenes, they're having drinks together, shaking each other's hand, laughing, patting each other on the back, and they go on about their business. That's absolutely correct. Now, there are cases where the politicians legitimately hate each other's guts, and no right. matter what, I mean, they're going to use whatever power, you know, political. I mean, I think Garrett Graves would uh, attest to <laughs> kind of how that that thing turns out. And uh, but he he pissed off a lot of people to get going against him. And well, uh, I here's think, what I think: some people's bills in the legislature that are getting vetoed right now are resulting in you know them uh, kind of going out there, running their mouth, bad mouthing politicians who have good intentions and they're suffering well, the consequences out of, of that well true and as we you know start getting towards what what the crux of the show tonight is about i want everybody to know that if you've ever met duke or me in person we're the same way here that we are in real life there's zero difference you know Poor little princess thought she was going to call me out in the parking lot. I tried to dispel that, and she wasn't having any of it. So fine, I let her have it just like we do on the show. Duke, you and I have been into it, you know, on a couple of issues. And we're just like we are here. We can agree to disagree, but we're the same people that we are. Unfortunately, many politicians, I would argue the majority maybe even the vast majority, are not. They're one way politically in front of the public eye. They're a completely opposite when they're in private. And that's one of the reasons I dislike most, not all, politicians. And, and, and that is the problem. And I think that's what makes our show uh, palpable to people or, or, or it makes it to where they want to see it is because we show that other side where they don't get to see that other side. And if, if we weren't here, they wouldn't see it at all. They, they would have some other idea uh, about, and, and tonight's show is going to show you another side that you don't normally see. You're not going to see it. And <laughs> yeah, it's uh well, it's quite the doozy. Okay. So let's set a couple of ground rules for everybody watching tonight. And we've got a, uh, audience north of 100 folks so far and again text some more friends and all that because we're going to go through this entire charter commission meeting workshop soap opera whatever the hell it actually was but here are the ground rules so it's a lot of content folks and duke has spent hours this afternoon going through video and finding things i spent you, hours you trying well. to get video ready <laughs> We were both getting hammered with text messages and down other rabbit holes and all that. So, you know, as we are most weeks, we're not 100% prepared. We're going to work down the list as best that we can. So bear with us on some of that as we kind of jump back and forth between different meetings and videos and all that sort of thing. Yeah, as you said earlier, it was an information overload day, and, and we've got actually more information and connecting the dots than we can process, and we're going to do our, our best to uh, you know, connect the dots for you guys and, and just put it together so you, right. you can make your own opinion of things. So right. the stage, what was the st set the stage, Rex, for what, what we're doing here. Set the stage. What, what, what happened today? What was the significance of today? Well, the significance was the Charter Commission was having their quasi-last meeting. So their hope was to start the meeting this morning, I think at 9 o'clock or whatever time it was. And they were going to try to get through the remaining items that they needed to address to present to the city council. Now, there had been some discussion, as we listened to in the previous Charter Commission meeting, that if, you know, they were going long, because there was also a city council meeting today, that they would probably do a break and then reconvene maybe this evening or try to do something. I think Thursday was the other target day, maybe. But the problem is they're against a time 
crunch and a time wall where they have to get these things submitted because they're going to have to run many of these things through, you know, legal and, well, through Richard Ray, if he's actually the city attorney, we, that's up in the air, we'll see. And, and run it through a, a probably a third-party law firm before they can get it to the bond or get it to the city council, before they can get it to the bond commission, so on and so forth. So in other words, they're up against a time wall. And, yeah. and the construction and the extra security measures at City Hall were also playing into this because they had limited availability of the chambers to have those meetings. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, part of it is part of it as well, too. There was a lot of things that transpired before today's meeting, and we're going to try to go backwards and we're going to try to catch you up on what transpired before this meeting that made things happen the way they happened at this meeting today because it completely fell apart. And when Rex talks about the timeline, according to uh, whatever role the uh, assistant city attorney, that's his proper title, Richard Ray's position or title is within this charter commission, whatever that role is in which he describes it multiple ways. But again, we're going to let y'all make that decision. He says a little confusing. It's a little confusing, but we'll let you make the decision. Um, you know, he, he alleged in one commission meeting that they had to have this thing wrapped up by the end of June or else if they had not had it wrapped up by the end of the June, it would push it into the elections of next year, 2025. So what that would mean is, is none of the amendments to the city charter that they're you know, trying to make would go in effect until then. That might not would be an issue. Probably the only one singular thing that, that would make that be a problem would be term limits. That would be the only thing. And as Shane Cheatham pointed out in one of the previous meetings, the whole reason you have a charter commission is because of term limits. And he's absolutely 100% correct. He is. And, you know, we all know because we've talked about it, uh, you know, I don't know how many times in, in 200 and some odd shows about the term limits. That's the big issue. As we all know, we're not going to beat that dead horse too much. That term limits and the subsequent lawsuits and, and all those things that went on, even though we got a text message to remind me of my favorite word, um, all those things that happened and have happened and are continuing to happen, by the way, are all designed to thwart, there's my new word, thwart term limits. So, and with that said... I, con I concur with your opinion. Yes. With that said, let's figure out how to actually cover this. So, I mean, we're going to go, we're going to pretty much have to show... Um, all or most of the meeting today. Now, luckily, I did have time. So let me go ahead and switch screens here. Let me get my mouse cords and all that kind of stuff. It's like a disaster on my desk right now. All right, let me go ahead and switch screens and let me get us over there. And I did have time. I finally got it done by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Reference to the little piggies in the graphic today. I did get this transcribed. I think that'll make it easier for everybody to kind of follow along because you'll be able to not only hear, you'll be able to, if you're watching on the computer screen or even if you're on mobile, if you blow it up a little bit, you'll be able to kind of read along as we go. I hope that'll make it a little easier. Full disclaimer, this is an automated transcript that I had you know, went in and tried to correct as best I could. So it may not be 100% accurate, but for the, our purposes, it's very, 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 very close. Okay. Now, as we said uh, just a few minutes ago, a couple of ground rules, we're going to be bouncing back and forth between this content and other video content. So just bear with us. We may be switching screens and all that sort of thing. So just hang in there with us. All right, let's get to it, Mr. Lowry. Um, <clears throat> the, the, I, I they're, really... they're, they're supposed to be here. Here's the ground here. Here's how it starts. Charter commission is supposed to be meeting 9 a.m. This morning. You can see in the image there, the video that we're fixing to start playing. 
there's only three members of the Charter Commission there. And I, I think, I don't know that it's on the video, but, you know, the chairman of the Charter Commission, Preston Friedley, says that they think that there's a train that's delaying other members, that they're late, so they're just kind of hanging out there until the other members arrive. Well, and, okay, so let me set the stage for that. So um, this, where the video starts is about six or eight minutes into the meeting time, uh, into the start of the meeting time. So in other words, it's about six minutes after nine, maybe even eight minutes after nine, somewhere around there when the video actually starts playing, Preston had already announced what you just said, dude, that there was a maybe a train delay, so he was trying to kind of move very slowly before, you know, taking roll call or anything like that to give the other charter members who were absolutely absent time to get to the meeting. We already knew that Shane Cheatham was going to be absent. That was a that was a given. He said he was not going to be able to make this particular meeting. He had other engagements. We already knew that Pandarina Sumas, I hope I said her name correctly, was frequently absent from the meetings. So it was a pretty good assumption that she might not be there. But the rest of them, well, yeah, it just happened. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and let's hear... Um, Preston for a few minutes talking about that and we'll just start rolling with it. Here we go. I, I, I would oh. recommend people go ahead and put your seatbelt on now. <clears throat> oh yes. Yeah. This is, this is the point where you do that. Good, good safety point, Mr. Lyle. Best thing for them to do, which I thought that they had asked. In fact, it is their agenda that we are looking at because it was prepared by Miss Sandra Moorhart, who is against term limits she put the agenda together against my approval and evidently with the approval of Mr. Ray. And that's the agenda that was presented to me this morning. So let's pause there for a second. Did y'all catch what Mr. Preston said right there? He's talking about a, a controversy with the agenda. Now, we're going to go into more details about all that here in a little bit in the show as we get further down that. But just know that there was some controversy between an agenda submitted by Ms. Moorhart, one that Preston submitted as the chairman of the, the um, commission. And so that's what he's referring to. And then Richard Ray, might have heard Preston this morning on Keel, heard him explain this. Richard Ray took it upon himself at 8.51 a.m. yesterday to post Miss Moorhart's agenda, which was the agenda that included old items, one of which, of course, was term limits that had already been decided. Did I say that pretty coherently, Mr. Lyman? You, you did, and the, and the point I want to highlight it is, is that Richard Ray took the position to make a decision of which agenda, either the one by the secretary or the one approved by the chairman, he made a decision to choose which agenda he preferred, yes. which I think that's he languished out of his, over it. I, I think that's out of his wheelhouse. That's my opinion. Let's keep going. All right. So I can only assume if they put the agenda together that, for some reason, they are not happy with their own agenda. So I would just say that we um, uh, take a look. Um, we cannot. This is like a work session, um, or it's like um, uh, it could be like a work session, or it can be considered a um, a public session in which we cannot take any action. Okay, I'm going to pause again. He's referencing the fact that at this point. They haven't officially started the meeting yet, but at this point, they obviously don't have a quorum, which means they can't conduct any official business. So you could have just a general meeting, but nothing officially could be done. And he was referencing the agenda that they must not like because Ms. Moorhart made it clear she was not for term limits. She submitted the agenda to Richard Ray who took it upon himself after languishing all weekend, his words, not mine, 
to post that agenda Monday morning, which was going to cause more discussion and potentially a vote about term limits, again, which had already been voted on and decided. So that's what he is referring to. So I want to make sure everybody's clear as we move forward. All right, here we go. The, uh, which would mean that all the actions that are currently uh, have been approved and handled will just stand. There are 17 additional items that um, the Charter uh, Review Commission would like to review and vote on, but we cannot do that unless we have five attending members. So I would ask the members of the media that maybe you need to reach out to the other members of the Charter Commission and find out why they were not able to attend. I find it interesting that they all might have had family emergencies or be sick. It could be just a pure coincidence. Things like that, I guess, can happen. But with that being said, let me go ahead and do the uh, official. Sir, sir if I may. What is uh, it, it, Mr. Ray? Uh, I would like to address some of the comments that you just made, some of the comments you made this morning on the radio, some of the comments Mr. that you Ray, may have made. We're not, we're not here to debate. Sir, this Mr. is not Ray, a meeting. Mr. Hey, you Ray, don't, you don't have, Mr. Ray. Well, that, you don't Mr. like debate. Ray, you like to, you like to Mr. monopolize Ray, the time. We are not here to debate. Okay. I, this Mr. is not Ray. a debate, but you have said false things. I have a First Amendment question for you, Mr. City Attorney. I'm not we the, the public. Attorney. I believe this is a Listen. public facility, and I think the people that came to this meeting should have a right to speak in an open forum. I'm here that's, like that I'm a part Mr. of this Crockett. community, too, and I'd, I'd I would like, like to call on Mr. Crockett, who, as a citizen, has come forward to uh, make a comment at this Sir, work this session. Is All right, I'm going to pause it right there. Because y'all can see, they're just getting started. This is only the beginning. But did you catch the one thing Richard Ray said just about 30 seconds before this? He said, I'm not the city attorney. Now, that's an interesting choice of words that he uses repeatedly during this meeting. Then why is he sitting in that chair over there acting right. in, in the stead of the city attorney? Yeah. I, I, I'm okay. wondering. All right, and here we. Yeah, you go ready? Ahead. All right, here yeah, we go. Let's do it. It's not a meeting, and you're not in control. It is of a, a meeting. Nor are you, Mr. City Attorney, because it's not a meeting. In fact, yet. let me. And this is out, a public wait, facility. Let me point out something, Mr. Ray, that you said to me on Friday. You said I am not the legal counsel. That is correct. I am no more than a member, and I am a non-voting member. That is correct. So I appreciate it. I will happy to get your uh, comments in a minute, but I'm not going to have you attack me. Under what authority on a are you, are you doing this? I'm not going to have you attack Mr. Ray, me because we have a First Amendment, amendment Do authority. Do I not have that right same now. right? No. Well, you know what? I think you need to be a person of the city and not obstruct the public who would like Thank to. Let, let us have order here one at a time. Mr. Ray started. If you'd finish, Mr. Thank Ray. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. That. All right. So I'm going to stop right there. Are y'all kind of getting the drift of this? The acting a city city attorney, acting city attorney, technically the assistant city attorney, is not the city attorney. He's y'all might have thought he was giving legal advice to the charter commission all this time, but we were deceived. He is not the city attorney. Well, exactly what his role is. And he goes on a little further to say, I'm not representing you. I'm not representing the commission. I mean, he, he kind of <laughs> puts a lot of smoke in there about what is that? Well, I'm just curious, ultimately, and we'll find out who the hell he's representing and what, yeah. what is his purpose in even being there? Exactly. And folks, we're only three minutes and 32 seconds into a 29 minute and 13 second meeting. And it went the entire time, plus some bonus footage that our good friend Wes Marriott sent so, us that we're going to review. So to to I, I will say this, Richard Ray and even the Colonel said it, they, they all acknowledge it and correct. There's not an official proceeding taking place here. That and is true. There is no defined order. There is no defined uh chairman or, or anything of that but the purpose of everybody being there 
is to have a, a charter commission meeting and any discussion going on, Richard Ray is correct that it's just yeah. an open forum for everybody to say whatever they want to say and to argue if they want to argue. Yeah, it's an informal call. discussion going on right now because the meeting yeah. was not called to order. Roll call has not been taken. Whether or not there's a quorum has not been established at this point. Yeah, so, I mean, as far as the authority of the chairman to recognize one person over the other, I, I would contend Richard Ray's right. Yeah. It's it's just everybody hanging out in the council chambers. It's almost a WWE match. Yeah, whoever can scream the loudest. And apparently, Richard Ray, I mean, I I remember one of these charter commission meetings where Juliana Parks was saying, you know, hey, it's not always the loudest, you know, that represents the majority. And, right. But in this case, I mean, it looks like Richard Ray practiced the loudest uh, mentality. So, All right. Anyway. Uh, I want to put this comment up here. Uh, and do a little foreshadowing. Time for Chami Chandler to be a mayor and relieve Richard Ray of employment. Well, Tommy, I'm sure, I mean, Tommy was not at the meeting because I was there, certainly. I doubt he's going to comment on this, although Lewis Johnson was. And I'm, I have to say, Lewis Johnson was exceedingly courteous, came up, shook everybody's hand, said hello, and all that. So kudos to Lewis Johnson. Um, but there is somebody that gets up and talks here in a little bit that might could give Tommy a run for his money if he chose to ramp up. That's a little foreshadowing going on. All right. Ready, Mr. Lowry? Let's go. I have the same First Amendment right that you do, Colonel Crockett, and that you do, Mr. Friedley. But you're being paid. Let's let's not give for this time work to the I'm speaker. not. I, this okay, is a, a volunteer minute. position. Wait I have stop the press. You, you gotta back up. All right. I, I think that is the first thing we're fixing to have to we're fixing to have to bring you guys back. You got go back just a second and yep. play that little part. And, and I gotta I gotta call foul. I mean yep. because this meeting, I mean, there's a lot of accusations of being liars. You know, the right. it's, it's thrown around like it's nothing. You know, people accusing people of being liars, but. Play that part again, what he just said. Okay, here we go. Friedley. But you're being paid. Let's, let's not for this work to the I'm speaker. Not. I, this is a volunteer. I'm going to pause it right there. See where he says this is a volunteer position. Here we go. Position. Okay, I have paid work that I need to be doing in my office. This is volunteer work, and I have okay. done a tremendous amount of it, yeah. and I have done, I believe, a fair job. Okay, stop. Stopping right there. All right, now we got to jump over. I think right. it's to the the first in the notes, the first. All right. So I'm going to switch screens for just a second while I grab that other video. So everybody bear with me just a minute. I got to do a little clicking here and I'm going to grab the first one. And I think, uh, is it the 628 mark? And that uh, one probably eight, that eight, we're going to go. 1827. Okay, hold on. So bear with us just a minute, folks. Now, this here will be one of the previous Charter Commission meetings to where, and it's not our words, but Richard Ray talking about, you know, his pay or lack thereof or what have you. But you guys just heard what he just said. He's strictly volunteer. He's not being paid. I don't know. You guys listen to his words on I mean, this date. Yeah, and, war, like Richard Ray likes to tell us, words matter, right? And you need to hear all sides, so we want you to hear the other side of it, too. Here we go. The only thing that I would say is that it's 449, and there are issues with, there are, I'm a salaried employee. I'm here as long as you need me to be. But there are, <laughs> there are, there are oh. city employees here that are on the clock that will be after 5 o'clock. So did y'all catch that? He's a salaried employee. He's here as long as you need him. What? Now, Duke, I know you've held many jobs and all that. I've held many jobs, too. I've been hourly and I've been salaried. So if I'm a salaried employee, I'm pretty much on the clock most of the time. Unless you're man shack in an ice storm to which you file for, remember that, uh, Mayor yeah, Tommy well, and, and yeah. Jacobs and Richard Ray yeah, and all y'all. That's the, and, that's the and one of the good old boy exceptions. 
I think it was Manchac. I think that was the deal. You know, you had the ice storm and they filed for overtime and all that stuff and they were salaried and they got it and there was nobody disputed that. But, uh, but, but that's not the point. Richard Ray said, Richard Ray said, I'm strictly volunteer. I'm not being paid. But then yeah. in this meeting, he said, I'm salaried employee. I'm here as long as you need me to be. Yeah. Which I mean, is it, Richard Ray? I'm, I'm starting to get confused a little bit. But hold on. Let's play it again just to make sure we're clear. The only thing that I would say is that it's 449 and there are issues with there are. I'm a salaried employee. I'm here as long as you need me to be. But there are, there, are, there are city employees here that are on the clock that will, after 5 o'clock, there will be overtime issues. Okay, so, so, uh, so I, I don't know. Y'all tell us, do, do you think that he's being paid or do you think he's not? I mean, is he, Which is it? Which is right? Is it the Richard of that one, that meeting, or is it he's the Richard salaried. of the meeting today? He, he insinuates in that meeting that he is being paid to be there. He's salaried. The other guys, the other employees are on the clock. Hence, it would cost the city potentially overtime. And then to the marshal's office's credit, there was some discussion for the marshals that they could, you know, be flexible on their time and not really cost the city too much extra. So kudos to them. But you just heard the city attorney there. So it's a little confusing as to which one he means, but I, I don't know. He, I'm confused because the princess told us last week that you should always tell both sides. She did. She did. And that brings to mind at the 1142 mark of this video, since we just happened to have it up. I mean, what kind of a Bozier watch show would it be if we didn't share a part of, you know, some of her dialogue? Yeah. Um, here we go. And, you know, telling all sides, I'm just wondering, did she tell all sides here at the 1142 mark? Let it go. Hi, I'm Juliana Parks. I am an, attor I'm an attorney. I've been practicing for um, since 2006, whatever that math is, about 18 years. Um, and the, the law that I practice deals with um, government entities and that sort of thing. So I can bring that experience um, to this position. I do live in Bossier City, obviously, to be chosen. And um, I moved to Bossier City when I left law school. Before that, I lived in Houghton, um, and I graduated from high school there. I married a guy from Airline, which is anyway. So Just a guy from Airline. Live, now we live in Bossier City. I have two yeah. boys. One goes to Airline, and one goes to Cope. Um, and I look forward to, to serving on this committee. Um, I think that something that I bring to the table is that I can um, ask the, the tough questions and make sure that we're thinking critically about this stuff. Um, one of the biggest things I've learned since being elected to the police jury is that um, just because somebody's the loudest doesn't mean they're necessarily the majority. And so I'd like to be careful that when we say we're speaking for the people of Bozier, that we really are speaking for the majority. So she said so much right there. And honestly, I got tired of hearing her talk. She sounds like the teacher off of Charlie Brown. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. But, but she didn't tell all sides of the story. I mean, oh, wait. come on. How she, many of y'all? She was being a little reserved even there, like most attorneys are. Well, like, you know, in those meetings, she said that you should tell all sides of the story. But I mean, I'm, I guess there's an exception for, you know, people like her. But what she didn't tell everybody is that, oh, yeah, I'm sitting on this board that will be making amendments to the charter that encompasses things regarding my husband's job as the city attorney of Bossier City. Why didn't she tell everybody that? Why, why mm. didn't? I mean, I'm just dying to know why she didn't say, oh, my husband is the city. She just said it's a guy from airline she married. No, her husband's the city attorney of Bossier, and that is delineated in the city charter. It's in there. Well, yeah, I, I mean, and taking that even a couple of steps further, the, the charter commission will be dealing with many things, including term limits that have a direct effect on yeah, city judge. The very, My bad. Yeah, on the on the very uh, the very city council people that appointed them, including ones who have, you know, insurance deals with almost every other government agency surrounding us besides the city council, and only because he's 
you know, prevented by law from doing that, or I'm sure he'd have an insurance deal with the city council. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's no, just no, a big rabbit no, hole. No doubt. And one last cut off of this video that a 4231 mark and, and Miss Moorhart, she had some comments that, I, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, look, this thing started out and this is, this is what she believed when she started out. And I think quite a few of them on there, maybe even Miss Wilhite had some comments. I can go back and pull them if, if she disputes that. I mean, but, you know, let's play Miss Moorhart's comment. Okay. To think about. So if we are here to do what the people really want us to do. And if we start our work without knowing what the people want, then are we doing the people's work? I think we know a couple of areas, but should we have the town hall meetings first and then start to really dive into the work? But but the, the long and short of that is there she acknowledges they're there to do the what the people want. That's the key takeaway. They're there to do the what the people want. Not and their own the personal biggest, agendas. Or anyone else's and you know i'm just i'm just wondering i mean is not allowing the people to have a voice or have a vote on the the biggest show of support for something is that letting the people have what they want is that her idea of letting the people have what they want whether she agrees with it or not if she's not there to represent her interests or a single individual other person's interest and she's there to represent the people's interest and if a majority of the people have expressed an interest in one thing and she denies that or fights that is she truly representing the people well mm -hmm. i'll look i'll be more direct is she lying right there it's a simple know. question I, I I think it is a simple question. I think we got to go back to the original video now, and we got to take up where the battle royale was <laughs> taking place, and let Richard it, Ray yeah, continue it's just on. Starting to get warmed up. Here we go, people. Seatbelts back in the on positions, please. Fasten your seatbelts. Unlike Mr. Friedley, who wants to run into the media and say things, and then just like he tried to do, he doesn't want the truth to be told. So let me correct the issues on this issue with the agenda. Hmm. On February the 12th, this body in an open meeting adopted Robert's Rules 12th edition as their general rules. I counseled Whoa, them, I begged them. Put on the brakes. Hold up, hold up. I, uh, we, we, we're gonna have to go back on that one. He said, he just said that on whatever, some date they adopted February Robert's 12th, Rules. February 12th. Robert's Rules version 12. And I don't think that's accurate. In fact, I know that I went back. Where's that here? I have to have it in the notes here. Um, that's not accurate. I didn't put it in the notes. I didn't highlight. I guess I was just going to go back, go back to it. Okay. They said generally that they were going to utilize Robert's Rules. That's what they said they were going to do. They didn't say Robert's Rules version 12. They didn't say any freaking version. They just said they were going to generally follow Robert's Rules. So to say that it was one specific edition or exactly that, that's not that's not right. I, I, I looked for it. I didn't find it. All I could find was just them generally saying they were going to use Robert's Rules. And I think... Um... I thought I had it. I thought I had found it and I, and I had marked it in the, it's probably in one of these, but was just lost in the notes. It's okay. not that imperative. Yeah. Not that big a deal. All right. So. Uh, if they want to say we're lying, if he wants to say we're lying about it, I yeah. know I can find it because I, I literally watched it again today, but let's let yeah. him keep rolling. Okay. Here we go. Them early to adopt specific rules. They chose not to. So they adopted Robert's Rules of Order, version 12, as their rules. We have had probably eight or ten or more Which I have meetings. a copy for anybody who'd like to look Great. at it. Great. I do, too. I've had one from the beginning, and we've made notes, and we've talked about it. I've read mine. Have you? <laughs> why, is, why is he talking so loud? That That what? is awesome. i got to play Does, that again. Hold on. Hold on. Doesn't Listen he up. know the loudest does not represent the majority? He didn't get that memo. Listen again. 
I do too. I've had one from the beginning and we've made notes and we've talked about it. I've read mine. Have you? Now, I want to say in the spirit of our givingness here on Bozier Watch, we're going to be providing at the end of the show a link. I'll put it either in the comments or make it, it's probably make it its own post to Robert's Rules of Order, the 12th edition, the PDF version. I found it uploaded on a website, and you're free to go download this before they yank the PDF version down because it's nice and searchable, big text, it's easy to read, it's about 1,100 pages, but again, they're using big font. So I just want to share that. It's like the Oprah Winfrey Show. Everybody gets a free copy of Robert's Rules of Order. All right, here we go. I have. And so... And please, Mr. Ray, try to be less You're not emotional. a chairman. We're not in a meeting. You don't have any authority this over me. This is a work session, and you don't have to be rude. I'm not being rude. You You're being, being rude by interrupting me. You are being loud no, and rude, just, Mr. Johnson, so please I'm just, make your I'm comments. I'm just please keep them calm. Um, Mr. It, Johnson it, has said that you feel free to talk. You got to stop. You got to stop. Okay. You got to stop. I'm just wondering from everybody watching this so far, who do y'all think is being rude and who's not being rude? Yeah. From what you've watched so far, what is your observation? Right. Come on, we want to hear in the comments. I'm not going to hit the play button until y'all tell us who you think so far is the rudest. Richard Ray, Preston, Colonel Crockett, David Johnson. At Lee Jeter hadn't said a thing yet. Who do you think I, is being I, I the mean, rudest? Yeah, I, it just, it, it seems obvious to me. I mean, there's got to be more. I mean, look, there's over a, a hundred and something of y'all out there watching. There's got to be more people than Weston or maybe, you know what? I, I've maybe everybody's in shock. They're all in shock. They, they did not take our safety advice and fasten their seatbelt. Look, Parker Ward. <laughs> Parker, are you still over, uh, still over in Caddo Parish and Shreveport area or are you on our side of the river? Parker Ward says... Richard Ray seems like a horse's rear end. That's a nice way to put it, Parker. But, but, but Parker, as you know, things are too important that you should put these, you know, little problems in the way. You should set things aside is what you should do. But I'm just wondering, Parker, do you think that Richard Ray is setting things aside, his personal opinion here? I don't think so. I think he's uh, letting it all hang out. Yeah. All right, and so Parker confirms he's he's still over in Shreveport. Good to see you, Parker. And I've seen where you watched the show a couple of times before. So, All right, help. let's step on the gas pedal again. Fireworks are certainly nowhere near over. Every meeting that we've had before, the secretary, your appointed secretary, that you nominated and voted for, has sent a draft agenda to all of the members. Some days she's done it 12, 13 days ahead of time. Some oh. days she's done it four or five days ahead of oh. time. But she's on the brakes. Whoa, 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 whoa. <clears throat> I don't know that that's completely accurate again. And I think we're going to have, we, we've got to do it. We're going to have to go to a second video. And I, 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 I uh, let me let me see here if I can find. It. Let me see if I can yep. find it. Whatever. Yep. Look for the right one. So, and just tell me whether it's the first one, which is the very top one. We've already covered most of that. The second one or the third one, so on. Go to the third one. All right. Go one, to the third two, one. Three. Okay. So give me just a second, folks. Again, I got to do a little clicking around to get all these videos pulled up. And go to the one hour and twenty four minute mark. Okay. One hour. And 24 minute mark and i'm also going to say this it may take us a few days um but we'll put together a montage of this and we'll release it as well which will be hilariously funny really it's dealing with city government it's not that funny but it is all right i should be at the one hour and 24 minute mark uh to comply with the open meetings laws is that where we want to be yeah, that is that is, well at the one twenty four thirty three mark. Yes. All right. Here yeah. we go. So 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 you heard Richard Ray saying that you know every meeting prior, you know Miss Morehart uh, creates the agenda and then sends it out, and that's the process. No oversight. No or oversight. every meeting. Well, yeah. y'all listen to this. You tell me what you think. Remember, words matter an email on this but if to comply with the public meetings or open meetings laws we have to post the agenda post it and post it on the website 
at least 24 hours prior to the meeting. Well, right. that, well that's a business day. So like the one on for today's meeting had to be posted before 11 a.m. on Friday. Right. And so I would just ask that the agendas and the and the draft minutes you know this has been a very aggressive meeting schedule and we've been able to meet everything so far but i would strongly suggest that there be a deadline of maybe like noon three business days prior to the meeting that that be if i can get a copy of that an agenda and that, that is prepared by the by the body uh, and the draft minutes so that that can be posted and, and distributed and i'll send that in an email because of the three days before just you know, listen, falls on different on. days, but yep. I just want to point that out, and so that we're not rushed on on each one of these, and the public has plenty of time to take a look at an agenda. Yes. So, Richard, is it would it be a, a good idea in order to meet that that we before we adjourn we set an agenda for our next meeting so that you can have that, or is that something the whole charter commission needs to do, or something it, you want to do? And let me clarify: really? I only need it because I need to get it to right, our IT people, right. but it needs to be prepared <clears throat> by the body. Well, I, I think the uh, agenda not. itself. I will ask whether or not our secretary, Sandra, if you, do you have a good feel for the agenda now that we're going to go through the same similar template, but this time we're going to have discussions of, of chapters one through five on the agenda specifically, and then we can draft up that agenda and forward it no later than, say, the 28th of February to give it to and the minutes you're the one well, doing it'd the be minutes. The 21st so I'm fine and, with doing it, but I would like to send up. it to you to, okay. for you to just kind of sign off on it, and then we can submit it to well, our next meeting. Form All right, did y'all catch that right there? That's the important part right there. Now, I mean, Richard was saying that every meeting, Sandra does the agenda the same as she did this time and sends it out. I mean, there was no difference. Well, that's not correct. She just acknowledged right there that she didn't feel comfortable about not sending it to the chairman and basically have him approve it before she sent it out to everybody. So and this this that, was the February the 12th of 2024 meeting just for context for everybody. Th that so the, that was the process. And Richard right. just said that it was something different than now than what yeah. it was so but, let's but also, let's listen to her also, again okay other than say the 28th of february listen up right uh, i think it's right in here in the minutes you're the one well, doing it'd the be minutes. The 21st so i'm fine or... with doing it but i would like to send it to you to, okay. for you to just kind of sign off on it and then we can submit it to well, our next meeting formal meeting is not in all right there you go she's not comfortable doing it she would like to submitted or have Preston as the chairman sign off on the agenda. And that was the understanding of how it was going to go forward. And, but Richard says it was something different and what Richard, you know, of course you got to tell all sides of it. And we haven't kind of got to that part. We're trying to piece this puzzle together for y'all. But what Richard didn't tell you was, was you had competing agendas for this meeting. You had, you know, Miss Moorhart submitted an agenda without sending it to Preston for approval to everybody to which, and we're going to show, we're going to show it here in a little bit to which Preston objected and said, no, I'll send the agenda out this time. And he ended up doing, you know, doing so, but the key and when you talk about sending out the agenda is what y'all have to understand the purpose of sending it to richard ray is because it's one thing for the agenda to be sent out to all of these folks on the commission it's an entirely different thing to send it out to the public to meet the requirements of the open meetings law for notification of the public 24 hours in advance the responsibility of that was falling upon the acting city attorney assistant city attorney richard ray and that was the purpose of him getting it so fast forward to this event and richard ray ends up making a determination in his opinion which uh agenda 
is the proper agenda to go with. And guess what? He didn't choose the chairman's agenda. He chose Miss Morehart's agenda. And he well, just said the process was the same way it's always been. And we just showed you video that showed that's not accurate. That's not the way the process has been since the beginning of this thing. And you mentioned something there, Duke, and the thought just occurred to me that as we played several minutes ago, he said repeatedly he was not the city attorney, not the city attorney. Well, he was the one that the agenda was actually sent to and forwarded that to the IT department with the city to even get it posted on the city website and distributed out by email blast. Well, you can't have it both ways, Richard, because I don't think a common everyday citizen can walk in there and say, I need the IT department for the city of Bossier to post this on the website, please. I don't think the city's going to follow that request unless you have some authority, such as the city attorney or acting city attorney, while Charles Jacobs is out on sick leave. Hmm. Well, is he is he really out on sick leave? Does anybody just going really by what know? Richard Ray said? He thinks everybody else is a liar. Therefore, M Richard Ray must tell the truth all the time. He, well, he has said that he was out on sick leave. I, yeah, you're right. He has said that. Mm, okay. Okay. So here we go. Let's step on the gas pedal again. Just yep. stop me whenever. She's always sent it ahead of time for comment by the group. She gives a deadline for comment and for changes. You, sir, have never commented on any of it. You've never approved or disapproved one in all of the prior meetings. Let, let me speak. Go ahead. I let you speak. You let me speak. Great. You are allowed to be as inaccurate as you'd like. That's just great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that up there for just a minute so that the folks, you know, watching on a big enough screen can see it. To repeat, <laughs> Preston told Richard, correct. And he said it very tactfully, very smoothly. Correct. You are allowed to he be. So <laughs> he, he was very polite in his condescending tone. <laughs> You're allowed to be as inaccurate as you'd like. Maybe that's what set Richard off. That set him off. I don't know. Maybe that was what, but look, he was triggered. No doubt. Uh, Keep going. Da Danielle says, mic drop. You're right. He, she, she, he should have literally dropped the mic. All right, here we go. So, gas pedal time. Mic drop. Last week, well, let me go back. On May the 21st, we met in this room. We began to vote on items. We voted on 55 items in this in this charter towards the end of that meeting it was brought up in fact mr johnson made a motion that we be able to bring those items back up and put them in old business and have them readdressed in the following meeting on june the 10th and that is exactly what was done in the agenda for the june the 10th meeting the 55 what we called consensus items that we voted on in an open meeting that took hours that was on the uh, june 10th agenda under old business for reconsideration at your request mr johnson and at your request mr friedley the old business that had been voted on in a meeting with a quorum was placed under old business no one seemed to have a problem with it when it was done when it, when it was done at your request Mr. Johnson actually said, we have 18 months to conclude our business. This is on May the 21st. We need to pump the brakes and take our time. The next meeting was scheduled for June the 10th. Then on May the 23rd, 12 days before that meeting, the secretary, as she's done every single time, sent a draft agenda. And it's important to note that an agenda is adopted in a meeting with a quorum. Everything that's sent before that is just a draft agenda. It's just a suggestion. And by the way, under Robert's Rules version 12, which you adopted, the secretary, and this is rule 473310, 43 colon 3310, the secretary and only the secretary is to prepare prior to each meeting an order of business to be used by the presiding officer. All right, I'm going to stop right there because he's rambled on for several minutes. So let's unpack that. You see what he has in his hand. Robert's Rules of Order, right? And he just version version, ver version 12. 
Right. He's, he doesn't and, have the correct version. He doesn't have the correct version in his hand. And so for those of you that are not familiar with Robert's Rules of Order, there are a set of rules that were done, if I remember correctly, Duke, in the late 1800s by General so-and-so Robert. I forget his first name. And it was a general set of guidelines for parliamentary procedure. And as the story goes, as soon as his initial version of rules were published, he was already working on the next revision to said rules. So there have been, there have been multiple revisions over the last century or so of Robert's rules. But they're general guidelines that uh, public bodies or any kind of meeting entity can agree to adopt and they set the framework for how the meetings should be conducted. Is that pretty clear? Yeah, yeah, that that definitely is. And for the and the the reality is, I mean, I'm making a big deal about version twelve or whatever. You know, really and truly, it's not. They don't change that terribly much. Um, they do change, but not terribly much. For the most part, they're the same. But the point is, is he keeps harping on version twelve. I went back trying to find it. I couldn't find 12. All I could find was generally Robert's rules. That was all I could find. And fortunately, I have a version 12. All right. In yeah, searchable so, but, PDF format. Yeah. So, and the point here he's making and what he's saying about, he just said that the Robert's rules is saying the secretary is the only one that makes the agenda. And that's the end of it. You know, now here in just a minute, he ends up, it, well, he says it right there. It's on the screen. An order of business to be used by the presiding officer. I mean, it, but he it doesn't tell also, the whole story here. No, he, 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 I mean, but it's not his job to do the whole story. And I mean, oh, look, this but is like the little princess told us we had to tell both sides. Well, you're right. She did say that you're supposed to tell both sides, but. I mean, look, this isn't an official proceeding. They're having just a bunch of dialogue. I mean, I'm sorry I'm going to give Richard the credit, and, and I, I know Richard. I've been friends with Richard a long time. I've been an adversary of Richard across the table from him in a debate like this, and he knows his Robert's rules. I'll give him does. credit. And But it's not <laughs> what Juliana Parks would argue with me, but it is his job to tell the other side of the equation. I mean, why is he not doing that? I, yeah, I'm calling on Juliana. Why is he not telling the other side of the equation? Where you at, Princess? <laughs> Get on his ass. He's, Hurry. Yeah, he's, he's supposed to be telling the other side of it, but he's not. But I disagree with her. I And I'm going to say this. The other side of the equation, Preston and them should have been ready on Robert's rules. Well, our friend Ashley Bullock says omission is still bearing false witness, which I think was the title of one of our shows once upon a time, bearing false witness about Juliana. Hmm. Hey, our friend Jeff Sadow had Jeff Sadow had a good one. Yeah, let me put that up on the screen. So Jeffrey Sadow says that is correct by law, but by Roberts, you aren't required to have an agenda, much less approve it. Hmm. Hmm. We'll have to review revision 12. All right, here we go. Gas pedal again. Would you please read from, I think it's rule, 78, rule 78 that says what the responsibilities of the well, chairman are. This is my time. If you want to, if you want to you, deal with it in your time, uh, this is my time. May I borrow your book, Mr. Uh, yes, here it is. Thank you. you can borrow mine when I'm done. So <laughs> the secretary has the role of preparing the agenda. The secretary for this organization has prepared the draft agenda every single time. Then when she sent the agenda out, she followed the same accurate. procedure that was done for the June 10th meeting. She put the items that had been considered under old business, just as had been done for the prior meeting at your request. Then a series of emails ensued and it seemed to be that this was, you were accusing Ms. Ms. Moorhart of, of following a brand new procedure that had never been followed. All right, let's pause right there for just a moment. Let's unpack this a little bit. So it just so happens we have an email chain that he is referencing. We have copies of an email chain. Well, yeah, and what he's talking about and what he's talking about in regards to Miss Moorhart and, and what he's talking about is, is Miss Moorhart. 
he says following the same what we showed you earlier where she said well i'm going to send it to you for your stamp of approval before i send it out but in this case she didn't send it to him beforehand she just sent it out and the rub here is is that they wanted to send out the information regarding term limits again it was a bunch of other things in there and we'll show it here in a minute but the main thing was was they were wanting to try to you know have another vote on term limits again i mean that that's what allegedly was going to transpire that's what we're told you know i mean i i I guess she could back up and say no that's not what we wanted we wanted to just talk about it but you know she could And, and look everybody you know you can go to the city's website and see the posted officially posted agenda for the meeting which includes that discussion that we're referencing here you want me to go ahead and we'll start down a couple of the email chains? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, where we, well, I think you ought to get to the point to where Richard really starts becoming belligerent and name calling. And oh. I think at that point is probably when we ought to, you know, bring the emails in. And again, another point of reference for folks to make the determination on their own as to who's being who's correct and who's incorrect okay so here we go gas this, pedal this would time be a good again. point to do it i agree this would be a good point oh, we to can do wait. It, but I, oh yeah. we, we can definitely wait this is fireworks here we go and ultimately she sent an email out with all of the dates in in response to that there was a series of emails and 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 this hasn't been discussed it's curious that none of this has been discussed in any of the media accounts but miss morehart sent an email out that showed exactly when she sent the proposed agenda out for each meeting and how many days ahead of time it was. And then when she sent the proposed agenda for today's meeting, there was initially no comment. Then Friday morning, you came to my office. You didn't make an appointment. You called my staff and said you were coming in 30 minutes. I met with you. You wanted me to send out your revised agenda to the entire group. I told you I was uncomfortable doing that that's not my role. Exactly. I told you I'm not your legal counsel. I'm not the legal counsel to this organization. Mm. I'm not even the city attorney. I'm filling in for the city attorney who is out on medical leave. But remember, folks, he is the assistant city attorney, full stop. And like he just said, he's filling in. He's the acting city attorney while Jacobs is, well, theoretically out on medical leave. Okay. Oh, but that I was uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, and he's not being paid for any of this, except when he's on salary and being paid for it. But maybe he's not, but maybe he is. All right, here we go. Comfortable sending out an agenda that followed a procedure that had not been followed for any of the prior meetings and that was not done by the secretary when the secretary, who is the person to do that and has done it every time, had sent out an agenda. The thought just occurred to me. Refresh my memory. When they actually do have an official meeting, they don't have to swear to an oath or anything. I was thinking that maybe Richard knew he wasn't under oath here, and so he's partially telling the truth, um, but then later he was going to be careful with his wording like he was in that whole Weston Marriott lawsuit ordeal. Well, he... Well, he started out this whole thing saying he was just speaking as a citizen. He, he has a constitutional right. I mean, but yet he's talking about his role as being, uh, a, you know, a, a representative to, to put out the agenda on behalf of the city for the Charter Commission. I mean, I, I I don't know. I can't I can't put all this together here. I don't think he can have his cake and eat it too. He can't have it both ways. It can't be both. It's got to be one or the other, right? Got to be. And and West Marriott must have one of those little clickers so he can keep track of the lie count. <laughs> Richard Ray. And I want to put this one back up here again. Uh, Richard made it. Ryan Haygood says Richard made it clear uh, he shouldn't be being paid for this volunteer work. Brian Hammonds, Chris Smith, I want to see an an ordinance put before the city council that all Richard Ray's work from here on out be volunteered. 
<laughs> well, when, 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 well, when Chris Smith gets to become the uh, council president, which isn't going to be today. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other story. <laughs> That's a whole other story because he was the uh, vice president. And now he is uh, I don't he's know the vice he president now, again. But... No, he's the vice president again. Oh, really? Yeah, he's so well, good they he's... elected him twice. I did watch that part of the meeting today. Well, and that's a whole president. other story, folks. Yeah. Sure. Oh, no, they squashed <laughs> that idea, but that is kind of related to this, but that's a whole other conversation. All right, it, here we anyway. go. Gas pedal time. I asked you to take your agenda, send it to the entire group, and give them a deadline for their response if you felt like you had an alternate agenda to use. You didn't do that. You went back Whoa. and you sent an email. Put on the brakes. Okay. That may be where we got to get into the emails right there. Yeah. So I, I want to, before we do that, I want to point out to everybody, the white line that you see at the bottom of the screen is the progress that we have made so far in the meeting. So as you can see, we're only about 25% through. You might better grab a sleeping bag and some more popcorn. Just saying. So go to 6-14-2024-12-27 cut. Uh-oh. Hold on. I got to find that one. So let me switch screens. Bear with us, folks. The which one? 6-14-2024-12-27 cut. 6-14-12-27. All right. I am completely lost. The which video? Okay. The one, two, three, fourth video? No, stand by. Share okay. screen. Well, you're talking about the cut. Okay, sorry. Yeah. All right, I got yeah, it. There. It well, it'll it may be easier if I do it the old way. Hold on just a second, folks. Uh I gotta find the deal for sharing Duke screen. Well, let's hope it's right. Okay. Uh yeah, yeah there you go. So anyway, uh, here is, let me go back, blow it back up again. Uh, June 14th, which was Friday, 2024. Um, oh crap. I can't see the, uh, yeah, let me see. Oh, uh, hold on. Easy. At 1227. And this was, uh, Preston sending out a copy of the agenda to all of the, uh, members of the commission. You know, as Richard Ray just said that he didn't, and y'all can see it right there. Yeah. It, it would appear that he did send it out. Plain as day, there's where it was sent up there at the top. So for those of you listening to the audio version of the show, I am uh, pointing up there. It was sent Friday, June 14th at 1227 Central Time. To all the commission members, you can see everybody CC'd up here. They're redacted, but you can, I don't know why they redacted the email addresses. That's asinine. But anyway, there they all are. No doubt and, about and, it. And, and for the record, these wound up in our Proton Mail some point today. Um, I, I don't even know, but as we were building the show, they, you know, bam, here they are. Magically, Proton Mail was fulfilling its <laughs> so so anyway back to the video okay I mean, uh preston apparently did you know richard ray said that he didn't apparently i mean here's an e here's an email chain that we have a copy of and richard ray is even on it that he did send it out right so rock on to the entire group and you said this is the agenda we're going to use and that was it. It was your edict. That is not what we discussed, sir. I asked you sir. to send it to the entire group for their comment. You did not do that. You sent it out with an edict that that is the that is the agenda that would be used. Then you sent me a separate email. And again, I don't work for you, sir. Oh, I work for the citizens of Bossier City. I don't. Wait a minute. Does that mean I can go up there and tell Richard Ray to shut the hell up? You just heard him. He now works for the citizens of Bossier. Now, I will say, and being in all fairness, I'm going to go back and, you know, in Preston's email, it didn't, you know, he just said asking all of them for comments. I, I don't know. I don't think that was uh, in Preston's email, but 
I don't think that was, but he did send, he sent, I mean, he's a chairman. He can say what the agenda is. Right. He doesn't have to ask him for I mean, comments. But, the comments can be had at the meeting. Well, that's absolutely right. And, and I think Preston ends up addressing that saying, you know, in, in another email, he addresses it to everybody. I think even, I think it was to Miss Moorhart and we'll cover that here in just a second because this thing starts uh jenning on so anyway go ahead okay and i just want to point out i have no problem doing that all right here we go i don't work for you you sent me an email and only to me instructing me to provide mr marriott with information that he had asked in a public records request and in and commanding that i post your agenda at 3 p.m that day Okay, hold Later up. that day, Miss Pop the presses again. So he commanded him, right? That's what y'all heard of what he just said. He just said uh, commanding him. Um, okay, so I think probably there. You can share my screen again for everybody. Okay. Coming right up, just and it a just second. so happens that we got that email as well that Richard yeah. Ray is talking about. Am, am I a little big there? Let me see. Uh, that's okay. Let me, no. let me stretch, let me control it on my end. Let me stretch the screen out and then we can yeah. see it. So in case you can't see it, folks, uh, it's to Richard Ray, uh, from looks like Preston's email address and it was sent Friday and it says, not sure what this is, is about, but would appreciate you gathering the necessary info Mr. Marriott is requesting from the commission. Thanks for our meeting this morning. Please make sure the agenda is posted by 3 p.m. today. Does that sound commanding? What do y'all folks I mean, it think? Almost sound, it sounds to me like he was saying, or else. It, I mean, he had a. it's almost like he had a gun to Richard's head. Right. I mean, if it was going to be commanding, I'd have said, get this damn agenda posted about three o'clock. Don't be late. And, you oh, better, by the way. You better. <laughs> yeah. You better or else. <laughs> yeah. Or else. That's it. <laughs> so here's the actual email. Again, not sure what this is about, but would appreciate you gathering the necessary info Mr. Marriott is requesting from the commission. Thanks for our meeting this morning. Please make sure agenda is posted by 3 p.m. today. That was sent Friday at around lunchtime, Friday, June the 14th. There it is in writing. I, I think that counts as a double or triple lie, Mr. Marriott, since you've got the clicker keeping score. Uh, come on now. All right. So let's let's keep rolling along with the video and, and let's analyze it. I mean, and... Look, I'm not I'm not making the judgment here. This is for everybody to decide. We're just doing I hate to say a comparison contrast, but this is not. There's a statement and we're providing a counter argument and you make full the decision. context. We're providing yeah. full context. Parker Ward says that's the nicest command he's ever heard. <laughs> he's a nice gentleman. <laughs> All right, here we go. Commanding that I post your agenda at 3 p.m. that day. Later that day, Ms. Moorhart sent an email to the entire group objecting to the fact that your agenda was going to be used, and she sent a series of emails objecting to that. Shall we stop there for a second? I, I think. Let me see here, because as fate would have it, I believe that we have that one as well. Okay. So just let me know so, when you're ready. I think you can. I think I'm ready. All right. So let me hit the magic button there. Okay, so for those of you that can't necessarily see it because you're on a small screen, this was June the 14th, 2.40 p.m. from Sandra Moorhart. Says, I object to the removal of the old business items. Several of those items have pending requests for information from commissioners and questions on the wording to improve transparency and understanding for now and the future. We'll get to those words here in just a minute. She says, I formally request all old business items be placed back on the agenda under old business. Now, first place, let me point out something. These are live streamed on YouTube and they stay on YouTube. And as far as I know, Google and YouTube have not gone out of business nor had any real hiccups since 
that last meeting. So any of these commissioners could always go back to the video and watch the video themselves for any particular questions that they may have about said meeting and the vote, right? Yeah, and from this email from Ms. Moorhart, I'll, I'll take away a couple of things here. I mean, one, she's formally requesting that the old business items be placed back on the agenda under old business. Well, old business, if I'm correct in Robert's rules, are, is business that you haven't disposed of yet you you discussed and you didn't take an action on you didn't vote in favor or against old business or items that you it's unfinished unresolved business so to put these things in the classification of old business on the next agenda is to say that they're not settled well they were settled there was a quorum the the issues were resolved and voted on Hold on, Mr. Lowry. It may have been unsettling to some, though. I'm sorry, because there is a question about heartburn. We're going to get to that, too, because they talked about heartburn. But I'm sure that that vote was unsettling to some people. Words matter. Yeah, no, no, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. But, you know, she, I, I can, you know, I, I can see her, you know, objecting to the removal of old old business items but it is the role of the chairman to ensure the proper application of robert's rules and the order of business and, and all of that and I, i'm i'm sorry the items that were already previously disposed of in a meeting were not old business items that needed to be resolved again whether it had been done in the past on another meeting or not it was still not business that needed to be conducted again. I mean, he, he was correct in that. And, you know, the fact that, you know, Richard can say all day that it was the normal practice in business for her to just send it out there without, you know, having any consideration from anyone else and whether or not Preston had before or had not, you know, had any input on the agenda one way or the other is irrelevant. He's the chair. If he so choose to this time or the next time, he's got that right. Absolutely. They voted for him. They all agreed on that. All right. Let's go back to the video. Okay, here we go. Gas pedal time. I left Friday evening with this quandary of what to do. <laughs> I, I got to stop. I know we only got one sentence into it, folks, so I promise I'm about to hit play. <coughs> I just want you all to read that statement. He left Friday evening with a quandary of what to do. Oh, my goodness. Uh, they caught us trying to get term limits back on the discussion, re-voted on what Oh, whatever am I to do? That was his real quandary, folks. There's no doubt about it, Richard Ray. You're lying through your teeth. All right, here we go. <laughs> do I follow your instructions, which I think are improper and totally inconsistent with all of the process that we have followed so far? Except the stuff that we just showed you, you know, that whole stuff of how the process was actually followed, not how Richard Ray lied and said it was in the middle of his grandstanding there for his 15 minutes of fame. Okay. Or do I follow the process of what we have done so far? Which is to try to derail term limits over and over and over and over and over again, and you've been at the crux of all of it. Did I, did I summarize that correctly, Mr. Lowry? You left out the part of he doesn't represent Preston or the commission or and he may or may not be an oh, attorney yeah. for the city. Yeah. So exactly what his role is, I don't know. You left that part out. But anyway, go ahead. You're doing good. Does he kind of have an abiding moment? He doesn't remember what he is and what he's supposed to do? Hmm. I, I I don't know. I like Richard, I, I, but I'm just saying I, I'm he if he doesn't know, hell, I, how am I supposed to know? That's a good question. Here we go. Monday morning, I had full intention of just posting both agendas. Sorry, one sentence at a time, people, but I just got to stop that. 
That would have been interesting. Well, I mean, what were they going to do? Have a rump commission meeting? I mean, <laughs> dueling commission meetings? But yeah, they'll that, split the meeting up. Half of y'all can vote been, on this and half on this. I, that would have been it, awesome. Yeah. I mean, but I, but here's my but here's my question. If he doesn't represent the commission and he doesn't represent Preston or whatever, who is he to make the decision of which agenda he recognizes or doesn't recognize? The chairman had a meeting with him and directed him or commanded him <laughs> what to do. So yes. who is he to, to, to decide otherwise? The Rusty Maddox has a good comment and is using my new word for the evening. The commission's role is to thwart term limits. Well, yes, half or more than half of the commission's role is to thwart term limits. And you hit the nail on the head, Rusty, right there. I mean, we could just end the show right now because that has been the goal all along. And we have covered that ad nauseum as well. Okay, ready for gas pedal? Yep. But I realized to even do that is inconsistent with what we have done. You sent emails to this entire group, even to Ms. Morehart, and you said that she would be able to address those issues today. Okay. If I posted your agenda with nothing in it under Louisiana law, it would have to, it would take a majority vote for that for those issues to be addressed. And you know that just as good as I do. And so you didn't intend for those people to be able to talk about those things. All right. Let's okay. unpack that yeah. for a minute. So that, is, that, is that, he correct? Well, I, it just so happens that uh, there is another email out there um, from Preston to, uh, I think, all the rest of the folks on that uh, body. And let me see here. I can yep, find bear, the correct. Bear with us, folks. We're, we're showing content on the fly. And what I want you to understand, so what he's talking about is a parliamentary type procedure where if the items are not on the agenda, I mean, obviously a commissioner could have a comment period and just bring up those items, but then they run the risk of being called out of order and all those sorts of things. So that's pretty much what Richard Ray was referring to. Are you ready to share your screen yet? No? Nope. I'm, uh, I'm still, still trying to find it. Uh, yeah. which which email is it i don't know oh okay 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 okay, okay. got it uh yeah yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah ready for me to share okay here we go okay so it says this is from preston freedly to all the well to sandra Morehart and carbon copy to all of the rest of the commission members and the ex officio members by the way it says, thank you, Sandra, for your email. Those items have already been voted on at a meeting, which we had a quorum, so there is no need to revisit them. However, please feel free to bring up these issues when we meet on Tuesday morning. Have a nice weekend. Well, wait a minute. I thought he was trying to completely, according to Richard Gray, the lying attorney, he was trying to squash, I mean, Richard Ray made it sound like he was trying to squash all of her ability to talk about those items. Uh, well, he said, he said that you know good and well that there wasn't no way they weren't going to be able to talk about any of that. But, I mean, clearly he sent an email on the 14th at 2.53 p.m. to all the members of the Charter Commission, including uh, Richard Ray, you know, telling them that while he didn't, I mean, basically he's saying, I don't think that it's proper because it's already been decided issues. It's not old business. I'm, I, that's my words. But that if you want to bring that stuff up and talk about it, I mean, I think he's basically saying, hey. We'll have a discussion at least. Yeah. And as the chairman, <laughs> yeah. he, could, he could allow each commissioner, you know, a certain amount of time to air their thoughts about it. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, that that calculates another couple of lives there, uh, Wes. If you're keeping up with the timer, all right. Moving on. Here we go. Yep. You wanted your agenda to be posted so that nothing could be discussed. Nothing could be discussed. We just showed you literally the email where he encouraged discussion of those items. So again, who's the liar and who's not? 
Uh, I'll be honest, like I said earlier in the show, if you had just gone in there not knowing any of this information, you would have listened to Richard Ray because he's a very believable liar. He's a lawyer. It's what he get paid to do. Duke and I sat there and listened to him in the courtroom lies pants off. And that's a tall order. But here, well, he is directly lying, and we're showing you the actual proof. All right. Calling you out, Richard keep, Gray. Keep, keep going. Unlike the prior meeting when you insisted that the meet, that 55 items that had already been voted on would be placed under old business and readdressed. You chose a totally inconsistent procedure. You have no authority to unilaterally set an agenda not under Robert's rules, not under Louisiana law. Can we so pause and did, at least? I, I mean, I did, you're con boy, you're, Mr. Sir, Colonel, Colonel David, Colonel, well, listen, let, let, let him continue to pontificate as much as he'd like. Sir, will you what did he say? Continue to pontificate. <laughs> See, I don't need Cut to keep up. using the same words. I've got thwart and now I've got pontificate. What kind? That ain't no word used in Halton. I ain't heard of no. I, I'd want to fight him just for saying that. As we're going to see in a little bit in the bonus footage, <laughs> it was not far from a fight. All right, here we go. Keep pontificating, Richard Ray. You let me speak. I just, Look, I've listened I just, to both of you guys. I just gave a you the right. Amount. I just gave you the right. Go ahead. Well, then stop talking. You on the radio. <laughs> 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 that was so great. Hold on, we gotta play that again. A tremendous right. amount. I just gave you the right. Go ahead. Well, then stop talking. Richard you can just play that over and over. <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> wow. Uh, just, just keep playing. Yeah. We, we all right. got to the good part, y'all. Yeah, we have not we even go. got close to the good part, y'all. <laughs> Still, y'all, check your seatbelt. Make sure it's fastened, because we ain't even got to the part that's just going to throw you out of your chair. The plane is departing again. You were on the radio this morning, and then you've already scheduled another radio interview in the morning, so let me give you a lot of show prep, okay? Thank you, Richard Ray. You gave us plenty of show prep. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. I because the things that you huh? Do we owe him? I mean, he's not Maybe we should pay him a commission. Uh, th yeah, wait a minute, I see. We may be getting somewhere. Huh. Yeah, because huh. yeah. uh, okay, he doesn't get paid. He's not getting paid for anything else. Maybe we could offer him commission for show content. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the way he works. I got to tell you. Keep going. So uh, Jessica mainly uh, Langley Maddox has called him a clown. Um, he's also been called an ass over on the YouTube channel, and of course, another <laughs> Richard move. Here we go say are untrue sir they are absolutely untrue and i'm going to call you on it every well, single okay. time i've got a list of your untruths so far go for it go for are it are you finished i'm not, not finished wait a minute go on. is this a rocky movie or what go for it <laughs> oh here we go <laughs> i don't I need don't, your... I, I did not realize you had actually taken a side I don't take a side. I take the side of truth and the rule of law and the rule of these rules. Every rules and truth. Hold on. He doesn't take a side. He takes the side of truth and the rule of law and the rule of these rules. Hmm. So, I, okay. If that is the case, I'm just wondering if I want to get Verizon phone records that are older than 19 months, can I get them Rex? I don't know. Let's see. When was that case a couple of months ago? So now they to be, they got to be bumping 20, 21 months, 22 months now. I mean, gosh, that just may be so difficult to do. It would, uh, it's not easy to do it uh, or exactly his words. He changed his words from what he said in, in court. You can go read the court transcripts, but you can go back and watch the city council meeting where he changed his wording and started couching or parsing his words carefully. And our friend and what, Ryan Haygood. What, what was that word? It's not easy. Not easy. Easy like Sunday morning. Our good friend Ryan Haygood got us the definition for pontificate. Express one's opinions in a way considered annoyingly pompous and dogmatic. That fits it to a T. He was pontificating about term limits and emails. All right.
Fire in the hole. Here we go. Everyone here that has been a part of this, Mr. Johnson knows what I'm saying is true. Mr. Jeter knows what I'm saying is true. Ms. Nottingham knows what I'm saying is true. Mr. Crockett knows what I'm saying is true. So when you left my office on Friday, I clearly made it clear to you that I was not going to send anything out. Then Wait, okay. Who did you ask to send it out? I asked you to send it to the group for their comment with a deadline, and you Which didn't do I that. Did. No, I no, did. no, you did not. I did. No, you that, did that not. We were planning to post it by 3 p.m. If they had any issues, please address those. That's Wait. So who's telling the truth here? Hold the presses. Stop the presses, Batman. Who is telling I, the truth I am here? Getting, I am getting text messages with information as we speak. <laughs> that, <laughs> that I was live on the of. show. Yeah, actually, hot off the press information that will be, I, I guess, at the conclusion of all of this that that I will share. Uh, and to okay. be honest with you, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm one of the show hosts here, and I don't know where we're at. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, we're winging it. We're pretty much just going down this, and we, we've got some more video stuff queued up. We can bounce back and forth. Suffice it to say, Richard Ray is the true liar here. There's no doubt about it. All right, here we go. That's a lie. I have the email. You said please this is read the email. Please read. Read the email. closely. I'll read it in a minute. <laughs> I've got the email right here. Well, okay, go ahead and read it. Well, I'll read it in a minute. I mean, it's like it's like when you're getting on to your children, Duke, and you're telling them to quit doing to quit stop doing something, and they're denying it and denying it, even though it's obvious the mess is literally right there in front of you. But they continue to deny it. He's like a child, a petulant, pontificating little child that is trying to thwart term limits. There, I got them all in one sentence. Are you ready to share your screen? Well, I am, but look, I got I to gotta be fair here. I okay. got to play devil's advocate. And, and you know what? If people want to throw rocks at me, they can. But if we're talking about the email that Preston sent, you know, and Weston, you might take one back here. If he's talking about the one at 122754, uh, you know, I have to say, I don't see, you know, where Preston asks for the other people, you know, the other people asking or asking the other commission members for comment. I, I think it's, I mean, I've got it on my screen here, but I think right. it would be appropriate to read this. If well, this is the one, I think this is the one well, that's in dispute. And look, we've said from show number one, we're very biased, but we do try to be fair about it. So, so I think I think the point of contention here that Richard is making is whether, not whether or not Preston sent an email, because I think it's clear as day that Preston did in fact send the email. But I think what Richard might be trying to say is is. And, and whether or not they had the agreement that Preston would ask all the other commission members or whether or not they wanted anything else added on the agenda or not. And, and, and this is the email. Dear commission members, attached is a copy of the agenda that we will be using on Tuesday morning meeting at 9 a.m. in the council chambers. I appreciate Sandra giving us a copy that delineates the 17 remaining items that need our attention at Tuesday's meeting. I hope we can conclude our business on Tuesday morning and our finalized copy, send a final version of the revised charter onto the city council so it can be placed before voters on the December ballot. We have 17 more items that need our decision. Any changes or addition to the agenda can be handled at our Tuesday morning meeting right there. Right there. He did. He did put it in there. I wanted to be clear because I wasn't sure because I I've been. So okay. I, I have to say he did. He did put it in there. How to address it? Okay. So. So far, Wes, what's the counter at? Let us know in the comments. What's the counter up to? Um, we've got a comment here that's uh, from YouTube says Richard Ray is a bully. In addition to all that Rex. And I might agree. Generally, I hate the word bully, you know, because Richard Ray is not, I mean, he just pontificates. Let's put it that way. All right. A bully is somebody that would actually hit you. I have no worries about Richard Ray hitting anything. All right. Uh, let's go back to the video. So, we did clear that up. 
We don't have to deduct a point from Richard Ray's side. He is still far in the lead in the lie counter. Make sure I'm correct there, scorekeeper Wes Marriott. <laughs> okay. Wes says number 25, Richard Ray. All right. All right. Here we Let's go. Keep going. But once again, you have an inability to acknowledge or speak the truth. So. Oh, gosh. And you're an attorney. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay you know I, i'm not gonna say it i just i gotta say you know, preston's little jabs are just great here we go we, we, we okay, got go a, a whole new method so, of scoring here yeah monday morning i posted the agenda and, and just the same way that I've done it for every other meeting, which was the agenda prepared by the secretary who has the authority to do it. And that would give people the ability to address those issues today or not address those issues. An agenda is not an agenda until when, you adopt it. When the it. secretary submits the agenda. It's a and, draft. And it is a draft. And if any members make comments on liking that agenda changed, what do you do with those? This is good. We've only had it one time. And that happened Friday. And what I did was I posted the agenda because the secretary was in conflict with the chairman. And the secretary is the person under Robert's rules that you adopted to prepare the agenda. So the and chairman so I has did, no approval over the agenda. Not under the rules you adopted. That's correct. That's not okay. Correct. Then you show me where it is. Get your book and you show me where the chairman gets to adopt the agenda unilaterally. All right. So words matter. And this is the only point where Preston and the good colonel and Everybody else there, hell, even me, I was sitting there, should have had this memorized because everybody was scrambling. I wouldn't, but everybody, what? Preston and the Colonel were scrambling to try to find it. But I, but I think Richard Ray corrects it just a tad because he ends up, he, he acknowledges the secretary preparing the agenda for the chairman. The, the chairman, think, right. I think he says that here in just a second. All right, let's go. Okay. Unilaterally. I, I do come to the meetings and ask that the agenda be approved. Exactly. That's part of the normal process. And in an open meeting, it gets discussed, public comment, and then it gets adopted. Is there Prior any particular that, issue draft. that has given you heartburn of what occurred on June the 10th? I told y'all we were going to talk about heartburn. <laughs> told you. <coughs> I wonder what he could be referring to. I don't know, but y'all, we're don't undo your seatbelt yet because we're not there. Oh, we're yeah. still not there. No, nothing. It gave me heartburn on what happened on June the tenth. What's happened? What gives me heartburn is the fact that you have, you are for whatever reason, incapable of, of telling the truth about this process. And you, you said are that out in a the couple media. of times, Mr. Ray, and that's been very inappropriate and very rude. But go ahead. Well, then stop lying. Excuse me, I would like to tell people what happened at that meeting in which you directly looked at my face and lied. So please go ahead. Uh, you, you'll have plenty of time, Mr. Friedley. You'll have plenty of time. I posted the agenda in accordance with the exact same procedure that we've done it every single time. I'm here, no. ready to do this no, work, no, 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 no. And ready to proceed. Wait, do what work? Proceed with what? It's not an actual meeting and you're not getting paid anyway. It's all volunteer. All right. Here we go. Awkward silence. Do, do, do. This, is not, this is not even a meeting. You, you even even this morning, I heard you insinuate that you tried to call my office yesterday and I wouldn't take your call because I was in a closed door meeting. A lie. I was in the courtroom over here calling a docket for about four hours, which is my paid job. I can only repeat what your assistant told me. Well, okay. my, Mr. Ray, my have... assistant did. Do what? Hang on a minute, because right. I, I, I think if I'm, I, I may or may not be getting these uh, emails correctly, but uh, never, no, never mind. I, I, I don't have the emails in correct. Keep going. Okay, here we go. And so Wes is keeping up with the score count here. 31 for Richard Ray. All right, here we go. Didn't tell Do you us all a favor for the community here. Please look up the responsibilities of the chairman. 
in the Roberts Rule of Order. Would you please look it up and tell us what the what it, the first paragraph of the Roberts Rule Why don't you tell us what it is? Well, I'm trying to find I'm it in here. I don't have my data that I oh, have. Well, well, Mr. I, I had to spend the weekend languishing over this and decide. There's the word languishing. Hold on. Yeah. So he languished. He languishes a lot because when I was reviewing one of the other meetings, he had been languishing uh, the weekend before that meeting as well too. Yes. I mean, and I, so I, let's I'm be thinking clear. all of his languishing is getting the best of him. Let's be clear. Richard Ray knows Robert's rules inside and out. That's no doubt. He absolutely could have rattled off the top of his head what Colonel Crockett was referring to right there. Absolutely. But he's trying to avoid the question and answer. Here we go. And deciding what to do. But you, I think you know where it is. Would you please read the rules where it says what the chairman's responsibility? I believe it says that the chairman is responsibility, responsible for the agenda. I believe Julian it's in there. Agrees. I'll try to look, Colonel Crockett. You and I have, we, we may yeah. not agree on everything, but I think we've been civil to each other. And well, I, think I, I do well. want to be civil, but I would like you, uh, but, speaking but again, for the city. A, we're look not at, in a meeting. B, I'm not speaking for I, the city. You don't C, have to answer this. You I don't, don't have to do anything. You. you have a free speech right. I agree with that. But read what, what it it says in Robert's rule of order for the responsibilities <laughs> of the chairman. I think we got to give credit to Colonel Crockett for trying to, you know, do the super, super nice guy routine and drag it out of him or just keep feeding him rope as the case may be. Yeah, kill him with kindness. Keep going. It says that he's responsible for the agenda, whether he works it through the secretary or whether he, however he wants to distribute it, he has a responsibility and he was appointed by this body. Uh, and, he, and he nominated and appointed a secretary, and I disagree with your assessment of Robert's rules. Would you please just help me just for a second? Pretty, I think pretty, it's worthwhile for the public to take ahead, the time. Let me go ahead, Mr. Crockett and Mr. Ray, while you're looking at that, and let me just clarify a couple of comments. Well, chapter 47, colon 7 says the secretary prepares the agenda uh, for the chairman. Stop what? right there. What? Put on the. I, I got the brakes at the right time there, Mr. Lowry. <laughs> what did he just say? I think he said, if I'm reading that correctly, let me read it real slow for those in the back, prepares the agenda uh, for, for the, chairman. the chairman. You read it right there out of Richard Ray's mouth. That may be the first actual truth he's told in this whole blasted meeting right there. And, and we showed you the video from a previous meeting where, you know, Miss Moorhart acknowledged that you know, she didn't feel comfortable sending anything out without the chairman's approval. Yes. And so, I mean, it was, it was, it was in video. Yeah. It, anyway. There was zero doubt about it. So give me just a second. I'm going to hit play on the meeting again and we will proceed on. All right, here we go. 40, for 41, seven for the chairman. Yes. Why would you? Good job, Colonel Crockett, on getting him to restate it as well and reaffirm it by answering yes. That's right. Keep Read going. Again. Yeah. Right. Why? But it doesn't. It's not subject to approval. It's for the chairman to use in the meeting. It's for the chairman to use in the meeting after it's adopted. That's not quite that way that works. But I, I'm, he now I'm he's not, trying to catch his words up. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's what it says exactly, yeah. but go ahead. So whatever the secretary puts in there, the chairman has no say-so. He just takes it and has to use it. Is no, no, no. It's a is draft that your agenda. interpretation? No, my interpretation is it's a draft agenda with numerous items, and then the body considers it and then adopts the things that are in it. Then the chairman uses the adopted agenda for the order of the meeting. But there's nothing in there that says the chairman... A, has approval of the agenda, or B, can unilaterally set an agenda. That's what made me very uncomfortable. It, it, no one here, no one here he said did. that. He, no, no. I'm one he, person. He proposes know, right? the agenda, and then it's I'm dying to know. So it, it, anybody, I mean, there, you know, there's 140 people watching. I mean, so of, of all of y'all, there's no way a lot of you haven't served on boards or committees or whatever. And on those boards of committees, have you ever heard the chairman make a determination as to whether 
a motion or some business that someone has put forward was out of order or improper and the, the, you know, determined that that business should not be put before the body and basically killed it. If, if you've noticed that, I'm wondering where does that power come from? How is it that a chairman, you know, in the committees that you've been involved in have had that power to do that, but yet Richard Ray is articulating here that a chairman doesn't have the ability to delineate what the business of this body or organization is going to be and what's proper to come before it and what's not. So according to him, you know, if I want to go there to support or get the, you know, Bowdoin City Charter Commission to support and fund the next widget convention, by gosh, it's going to be on the on the agenda. Yeah. That's it. I, I, what's what's the role of the chairman or the president of of any organization at that point or any meeting at that point? That's that's not the, what's that what's that commercial with the old ladies? That's not how that works. That's not how it works at all. All right, here we go. It's approved at the beginning of the meeting. That's not, not you weren't involved in the that. email, sir. That's not what he said. Well, I mean, either way, I, I'm sorry about the the mic irregularity here. I'm not trying to yell. I'm not um, here. I apologize. And, and no, but, uh, listen, but I, I, I'm here to talk about this face to face, person to person in this meeting. Wait, what meeting? I am so blasted confused. Is this a meeting or not? Is he the city attorney or not? Is he the assistant city attorney? Does he get paid or not? Or does he just live on rainbows and pixie dust? I, I don't know. I'm confused. I don't know if I'm coming or going here, but they, they're not having a meeting. Now they're having a meeting. He's an attorney. He's not an attorney. He represents them. He doesn't represent them. I, I, uh, total chaos and confusion. Here we go. I'm not scared of anything, but, but, but I think your media and say things is just wrong. But I believe what you just read, which or, or however you got your quote, is that if the secretary does the administrative part of the chairman's role to no, that's not to what I establish the secretary the draft it. of the agenda that's going to be approved by the body yes. at the beginning of the meeting. Yes, it's the chairman's role to approve. It's the chairman's role to direct the secretary is what it sounds like you just said, but it doesn't sound like the secretary, which I think Ms. Moorhart absolutely stepped out of bounds. And I think the colonel is dead on the money, but I don't think it was just her sole decision to step out of bounds. Do you, Mr. Lowry? I mean, I can go get, I, get some tinfoil and put it on my hat. I, I don't either. In fact, I mean, why is it that all of a sudden this particular meeting, because we can't come back and rehash or, you know, re uh, do the the one single issue that, as Shane Cheatham put, the reason that this whole uh, commission was put together for, which is term limits, they're all wound up tight because the one single issue they didn't have a quorum there or they didn't have a majority there to be able to stop getting term limits so now what do they do they just all don't show up they don't show up at this one richard is up here throwing a temper tantrum and conceivably because pontificating because uh conceivably i mean i think that uh maybe he it's not going the way he wanted it to go or the way that he was directed for it to go possibly i mean yes. you know there's conceivably that i mean he said he doesn't work for any of them and I, i'm wondering and, he, and his role is sketchy here at best so i'm wondering actually who he does represent right. uh it's very confusing yeah, it's a fair question he and I just want to, yeah. well, I, I just want to point out and then I'll hit the gas pedal again, uh, because we still have more, a little bit more to go. We've stated many times over the course of the last several years, since we started Bozier watch, we have warned everybody about Richard Ray among other people. And you just have to be careful. I'll, look, I'll be the first to say he is exceedingly polite to me when we see each other out in public or anything like that. 
but you got to watch him. He is a lawyer. Preston said it best. Here we go. Absolutely stepped out of bounds. She went behind the back of the chairman, and I think it's dishonorable to this group. Well, then you've that been providing did false information because she it, did it, the it same thing she's it, done every single time. It sounds like that's what happened in this time, and when Mr. Um, when okay. Mr. Mr. Cry. All right, so I'm going to stop right there. We just showed you the email chain, folks. The actual so emails it, that Richard Ray is saying don't really exist in the way that they actually exist. And the false, he just said, Colonel, that she stepped out of line, that Colonel provided false information, yet we showed a video where she acknowledged that I don't feel comfortable doing it without sending it to you first for you to check off on it or approve, whichever her words were. But basically, she didn't feel like doing it without having the chairman's approval first. I mean, True. so Richard, what, what part of what the Colonel, I mean, was untrue? I mean, because we sh we showed the video, yes. y y both can't be right. That's correct. Uh, <laughs> Parker Ward says, "Someone take the thesaurus away from Rex, please." I'll have you know, I used to read dictionaries as a child for entertainment. Okay, here we go. Uh, gas pedal again. Pocket go ahead. And, and Mr. Ray, if you would please feel free to look at the issue. I would only say that. Uh, unlike what Mr. Ray said earlier, in previous issues, when Ms. Moorhart has sent the agenda on to all the members of the commission and on to me, I have sent several times uh, on to you, Mr. Ray, and responded to the entire commissioners that I have no problems with the agenda as it is presented. Now, I took the assumption that that meant that if I had the authority to change something or once something changed, that that could occur. Yes, ma'am. I'm Priscilla McGee, and I live at 1407 Gardena Street, Boca yes, City. I just want to know, what is the purpose of this meeting? There's only the, three of you here. Correct. Why do you expect to uh, get out of it? I, mean, I, would say, I would say I appreciate that question, but we have had workshops in which we have not had a quorum. We have had uh, open meetings and for the general public in which we have not had a quorum, and we have received public input, and the commissioners have always had a right to express their view as we've tried to get through these 20 now two chapters of the charter. Right. I so we cannot take any official time. business. We can only just discuss this amongst ourselves. I'd like to ask a We've got a councilman here this morning. I'd like to ask a few questions and just get some opinion. Uh, okay, here Mr. We Hammonds, I don't think that we're we're getting anything done here. We're yelling and arguing at each other, and 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 it's this is embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, this uh, is going out to the public, and we're not we're not doing anything here, but but just digging a deeper hole. All right, listen real closely to the comment Richard Ray is going to make real quick to jet, uh, addressing David Johnson's comment that this is going out to the public. Listen carefully. I, I'm wondering why, if why is it question, going out to the public if, if we're we not can, in a meeting. If, so wait a minute. He's literally the city attorney or acting city attorney or whatever um, who directs the IT department or has helped orchestrate all this to be able to get it streamed and he doesn't think it's that it's being streamed. Why is it going out to the public? So would there have been a different show had right. it not it, had he known it was going out to the public? So, right. I mean, he knew the news, well, what, but channel, channel 3 was there, Channel 12 was there. Of course, I was there not recording. Wes Marriott was there. I think Wes was recording because we're going to show some uh, some after-the-party video that nobody else has seen yet, courtesy of Wes and Sobo Live. So, yeah, it's just interesting. And look at Hammond's looking at him like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so here, here. <laughs> Here we go. You're going to hear from a future mayor, potential mayor of Bowser City, in my opinion. If, if we're we not could, in a meeting. If we could beat, if we could meet, what do you think there would be any opportunity for a town hall or a workshop where the charter can sit down with the council and we can come up with something other than arguing, throwing stones, throwing people under the bus, making threats, making just 
it, this has turned into a circus. I was honored that you asked me to come up here, and I'm saddened today about, about the behavior of multiple people, including myself. We could all be slower to speak, slower to anger, and quicker to listen. Yes. If there's any hope that we can sit down as a body of the charter and the city council and the citizens of this city, I think it would. I think we're at a stage where we need to put ourselves aside and and simply talk to the citizens and. I mean, what do you think? I, well, we, we, we have to be very careful sitting out with the whole council because that's an open meeting law or a walk Thank of court that we all know is highly illegal. You can sit down with three of us at any time um, that y'all like. Um, <clears throat> from sitting back here, this is only my second charter meeting that I have been to. Um, to say that I'm highly embarrassed right now is an understatement. Um, this is not what the city council's convened the charter commission for um my personal opinion what y'all need to do right now is y'all need to follow the rules y'all need to take role you do not have a quorum and you need to end the meeting y'all need to reconvene amongst yourselves as the charter and figure out how y'all are all going to come together and finish out this charter we're on a deadline for this in july the time is the clock is ticking that is my personal opinion. That's me as Brian Hammond's Joe Citizen right now coming up here and speaking. I'm not up here speaking as Brian Hammond's City Councilman District 1. I'm up here as a citizen because in, in all end, I am a citizen. I'm a citizen of Bossier City. I'm a taxpaying citizen and I'm a voter. Yes, sir. And that is what I would suggest to y'all right now. I, I think it's a good suggestion. What, what, what y'all are doing right now, we're gonna accomplish nothing. Everybody's tempers are high right now yes. everybody's feelings are on their shoulders and i think everybody needs to we need to end this meeting go have a cup of coffee something sit down and talk about it and reconvene and see what y'all can come we, up with we do we need when we come up let's say you mr lowry <clears throat> i don't think it's going to make any difference i mean and, and as far as sitting down and all this yeah they're and working it out there's only one way you're going to work it out it's their way or no way and when i right. say their way it's no term limits. They can stay in there forever and they can continue to build more monuments, run up debt, force highways to be closed down, block businesses in with and do insurance you know, deals. A, a curb thing in the middle of the road and then scratch your head in front of the public for a show to say, well, how did this happen? How did this happen? And act like you're ignorant. And when you were the one that did it, I mean, right. come on, you, you, this, this is, it's ludicrous. I mean, I said at the start of this show, you know, we need more discourse. I mean, and when I say discourse, he's right and it's embarrassing. The discourse should not be coming from a trained attorney, you know, who who supposedly is supposed to, uh, uh, you know, hold to a certain, you know, set of ethics and 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 all of that. And, and I'm not I'm not but this will not it and this is not the kind of discourse that the public has we debate issues factual issues richard ray put forward what he said was facts i mean it's hard to do in a meeting like this when you're not prepared for the challenges of your opponent to produce these emails that say otherwise but this is how you have to do it and yeah. you get richard ray made his case the media is there. I think that's the job of the media is to, I hate to say referee it a little bit, but put these other sides out here to these equations oh. so that the public can see the, the, you know, what they normally wouldn't be able to see because you can't hardly, you can't defend against this crap. You well, can't. who knew a couple of quasi amateur journalists, pundits, as we call ourselves, would be the ones that have to go this in-depth on anything. Look, I'll give a little credit to Channel 3 and, and Madison Beam. She's done some excellent reporting on the city beat, you know, for quite a while. Full disclosure, you know, I've done plenty of interviews. I think you may have done one or two. The Colonel's done a couple. But the rest of the mainstream media has not been doing anything in-depth. They've literally been riding our coattails I mean, it, that saddle is just rubbing sores you, on my back. And you, I know you're, yours too. You, well, you're saying that that this is this is the kind of stuff, you know, showing all sides of the equation and, and what happened in these millions. You're saying that 
this is not journalism because I recently remember us getting a nasty email forwarded to us that somebody got that said that, oh, if you just have a web page and a social media thing or something to that effect, you know, all of a sudden you think you're a journalist or whatever. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing they're going to be, you know, putting this out there to the public. So all of you would know the other side of the story here as Juliana yeah. Parks, you know, who says that you should hear all sides. Yeah, but we know I'm you guys are watching. My, I'm not going to hold my breath waiting for that. Yeah. All Pick right. Your, so your, write your story out of this content. Well, it's okay. We don't mind. Uh, Mallory says Hammonds for mayor. And I want to point out, which is kind of why I freeze framed it. Do you see me right there, Mr. Lowry? Do you know I do. what I was doing at that point? <laughs> I was sending you a text message saying Hammonds for mayor. I do and you were like, that. and you were like, why or what? <laughs> whether you like him or not he just delivered an off the cuff speech and executed it very well okay, and come on, was speaking it, it, reason it, come on I, I agree he was speaking reason and he, he spoke well but this was not no Ronald Reagan moment I mean come on I didn't that. put I didn't say president I just said mayor Let's. We I like start him on but he's not Ronald Reagan yet okay not yet all right, see, okay. you said yet, so that's a positive thing. All right, here we go. Uh, let's hit play. <laughs> then sit down and talk about it and reconvene and see what y'all can come we, up with. We do. We need When we come up here, we need, to, we need to address these issues with dignity, self-respect, and calming words. I, apologize. I don't know about y'all. I kind of like the soap opera version better, but that's just me. I apologize to you that, that those of you that took the time to be here this morning. It's been an embarrassment. Right. And uh, I, I, it's just so not what we need to Before we be adjourn, doing. David, before we adjourn, just a couple quick comments and clarifications. And hey, Mr. Hammonds, I appreciate your words. And I, if I've done anything to embarrass you, I, I apologize. I just, when I drive to work and I hear this gentleman on the radio right. saying things that aren't true, I think, uh, I, again, I can't take Mr. It Ray, if you insult me one, one more, more time, time, I will, whoop your I will just make a point of clarification. In the meeting, in our meeting, um, in which we went back over and did not finish, we had an order of consensus. So everybody understands we had several items of consensus. We voted on those items of consensus in total. There were about 55 of them. Mr. Johnson, at his request, asked that they would be brought up again under old business so that everyone would have an opportunity to talk about those. I felt that was very appropriate. The commission as a group left those under old business to come back. We did not re-vote on those 55. We did review the 55 and went through. Um, at the last meeting on June 10th, these items that are currently listed under old business, there was no discussion about asking that they be brought up under old business by the commission. Therefore, I have to tell you, I was a little bit surprised that Mr. Moorhart, with the uh, evidently approval of Mr. Ray, they were chose on the agenda, to put those. Sir. Mr. Ray, I'm talking. They were on the agenda. Mr. Ray, I put. They were on the agenda, they were approved, and once they were approved, there was no reason to go back and re-vote. Now we can go back and as the request says, we can revisit them. I left them on the agenda. We will not re-vote on any of those items, but we can definitely review them and talk about them. I think that sometimes when things don't go the people's way that they'd like, and everything that's open to interpretation and comment, I have my own opinion, Mr. Ray has his own opinion. They may differ. It doesn't make him a liar, and it does not by any means make me a liar. If I can get a motion to adjourn. Well, there's no Mr. meeting. There's some chaos. I'm just no saying meeting. I'd like to officially adjourn the meeting. Well, there's no meeting. Is adjourn. there anyone who doesn't want to adjourn? If not, feel free to stay here. Meeting adjourned. I think what. All right. Hold on, folks, because this is now, one of the greatest moments Preston has here in just a minute. Go ahead, dude. That's right. Now, he's a little off of his game here, in which you got to think, when you're in the hot seat, I mean, especially and you're the chairman, I mean, you can kind of get rattled really easy. I mean, and you, you've got this mindset of conducting the meeting, and he's thinking that, okay, we've been having all of this argument, and they've been going at it pretty hot and heavy, and, and, and I – you know, he, he kind of got off there a little bit. I mean, just a little they, bit, but he gets back on point pretty quick, real fast. Yeah. All so right. they, they, up to this point, there's no meeting. They're just, but it is proper to say, Hey, we're done or close out or do right. whatever. But he never really actually called the meeting to order and did a roll call. That's uh, correct. But <laughs> here we go.
Uh, Mr. Hammond's laid out, he had the Robert's rules for you to take role and, and to adjourn. I think that's the appropriate thing, again, to follow the rules. Um, but Shane Jeter, here we go. Absent. Preston Friedley here. Lee Jeter. Present. David Johnson. Present. Sandra Moorhart. Absent. Julia Parks. Absent. Pandarina Sumas. Absent. Vicki Whitman, absent. Lisa Wilhite, absent. Ex officio members, Amanda Nottingham, present. present. Richard Ray, are you present? Obviously, I'm present. Did y'all catch what he did right there? Do you, does anybody notice the common threads between the members who were present and absent? giving a little leeway to cheat him because he made it known beforehand he was not going to be at this meeting. Yep. Does anybody see the common thread between the members that were present and the members that were absent? Mysteriously, everybody got sick. I wonder if they made it to vacation Bible school tonight. Was that tonight? Well, that's right, because in the previous meeting, they couldn't have the meeting in the afternoon because the members you know i think it was miss moorhart miss park said that oh we've got vacation bible school at six o'clock so there's no way we can meet we have to do it in the morning so they which, specifically which is a which is a valid look legitimate thing hey vacation bible school or whatever uh or bible study is great i wonder since juliana apparently wasn't feeling well we've been told i wonder if she made it maybe she didn't <laughs> Does anybody know paging Juliana, paging the little princess, the sick little what does, princess? What does anybody know why they didn't come to this meeting? Or, you know, maybe they were was, all at the doctor's office. Maybe they, yeah, maybe they were. Maybe, maybe they were they, all, they were all the train called them and they were all trying to get to the doctor's office, but they just couldn't make it. Maybe that was multiple it was. trains at one time. It was yes. multiple trains at one time. But, but here's, here's the thing the clock is ticking. They know that. And there's only 17 items left to resolve. And all of this stuff could be sent to the city council for amending the charter. So, so long as those 17 items aren't resolved, nothing gets sent to the, to the city council to amend the charter, including the term limits thing. So remember earlier when I showed you the comment about we're here to represent the people? Apparently not. Apparently there's some other reason that they're representing because there's a whole lot of amendments to the charter other than term limits, but they're not there. Hmm. They're not there. How All could right. that and, be? And look, we've got over 120 some odd, bumping 130 people, maybe more watching. We Y'all want to stay tuned for a few more minutes because there is actually a little bit more to this and then we'll do our summary of it so hold on we've got a couple of more minutes well parker but, but ward, we don't sometimes this is the, oh, go ahead parker ward made a comment here and parker ward is correct if oh. parker what i would tell you is is that i have heard that uh there i think possibly that there are some uh it, it might be even a criminal violation if if there was an organized uh, effort to not attend the meeting to prevent the the business, um, I, I don't know about that, but there was something sent to us regarding that. You might look it up. Yeah, very interesting point there, Mr. Parker Ward. All right, a little foreshadowing going on. All right, so a couple more minutes of this. Don't leave yet. Things first are not time, so just, just like what you do, if Mr. There Friedley, is, is there this is any the first time you've asked for... Now do we have and should we adjourn? Mr. Jeter, your pleasure. Mr. Chairman, the comments I was going to make prior was that we do a roll call off since we establish the fact that we do not have do a not quorum. not have a quorum. And once we do not have a quorum, then we cancel the meeting or set a, another date for our next meeting. Right. We are scheduled to have another meeting Thursday night at 6 p.m. in the Civic Center. The mayor has made um, it appropriate for cameras. Now, I'm going to stop right there for a second because what y'all can't see, you see where Mr. Marriott was sitting right here. 
All right, I was sitting, and you could see it from the other angles right behind him, so I was watching Richard Ray. Richard Ray literally had a shocked look on his face when Preston made the statement about the mayor having the Civic Center available and the cameras in the IT department. But he can't claim ignorance on that either because in that email chain, there was mention of that meeting that set for Thursday at the Civic Center that the mayor was helping prepare for. But he had a visibly shocked look on his face when Preston made that statement. All right, here we go. And uh, the IT department to carry that so it'll be broadcast live. I would hope that those members that are not here tonight will not um, uh, find it inconvenient to be there on Thursday so we can have a quorum. If we do not, I will tell you that at that point, the Charter Commission will have to look at the point that we have done all we can do, and we'll probably have to pass on what we've done so far back on to the mayor and the city council. This meeting is not adjourned or adjourned, according to our attorney, or not our attorney, Mr. Ray. <laughs> <laughs> oh... He's the he's the cockroach of the week. Oh yeah, and and, and, and very much the good way. Hands, hands down, the cockroach of the week. Absolutely. <laughs> so hold on, I want to play that one again just because it's great. Here we go, one more time, and we're coming up to the bonus footage in just a just a about a minute. Or Which so. is hold still y'all haven't seen the best part. The best oh, yeah. part of everything tonight, y'all haven't we're, even seen it yet. We're saving the best for last. Hold on, here we go one more time. And we'll probably have to pass on what we've done so far back on to the mayor and the city council. This meeting is not adjourned or adjourned, according to our attorney or not our attorney, Mr. Ray. That's <laughs> That is going to be a Facebook reel, a YouTube short. It's going on TikTok. <laughs> All right. So that pretty much um, concluded that part of the meeting. But, but. Oh, oh. There was, you, but wait, there's more. We had a meeting after the meeting? Yes. And, and I was sitting there and I went to grab my phone. Because I thought the marshals had to walk over there. I did think that they might go to blows. And fortunately, Wes Marriott. Who might, who might go to blows? <laughs> Richard Ray and Preston. They were not Holy done. Smelly. This is the meeting after the meeting. And fortunately, was... Wes Marriott caught it and provided us with the clip of it. Are you ready, Mr. Lowry? And are you ready, ready, folks? I'm ready to see Rocky number whatever. Let's go. Yeah. Here we go, the cordial fellow, according to Wes Marriott. Listen closely. You lied about the Friday meeting. You lied about the Friday meeting. You lied. Sir, are incapable of telling the truth. You lied. You are a, a liar. I did not. I asked you to say No, no, no. We're not going to just say it. I said, send it out for everyone's comments. This is about the point the deputies walked over. Good thing. Drop the latch. is a copy of the agenda. Oh, yeah. When you get faced with the truth, you run. Run away, coward. I'm not being called a liar by Well, you guys aren't clear. When you lie, you get called a liar. I get it. Well, that one more time, one more time. You lied about the Friday meeting. You lied about the Friday meeting. You lied. Sir, are incapable of telling the truth. You lied. You were a, a liar. You lied. I did not. I asked you to say No, no, no. We're not going to just say I said send it out for everyone's comment. And I did. You did not. You did not. Attached is a copy of the agenda. Oh, yeah. When you get faced with the truth, you run. Run away, coward. I'm not being called a liar by Alex. Well, you guys aren't clear. When you lie, you get called a liar. Does that mean that now, we get to run around calling Richard Ray a liar more than we do? Now, 
somebody, one of my friends, and, and I think it's somebody that watches this show, and, and it's escaping me right now, but they got this saying, a hurt dog squeals, or a hurt, kick dog, or a hurt dog, or something. Always, that's what Shot they always pig, tell me. whatever. Well, it was one of those James Q. Welburn quotes, is, is what I think. And uh, anyway, you know, I think they're right, and it just sure seemed like there were a lot of name calling and accusations and it seems to me that we have to devolve i mean and this is in debate when when you get to where you're taking personal shots and calling names and all that you've lost you're deflecting you, you, you're throwing you, out red herrings literally well, that's lost, what that means you've lost already the debate and you know look by any standard i don't think you can say that preston was being rude derogatory or negative, I, I mean, I got to say, Richard was the one that was being uh, rude and boisterous. He was the only one calling people names. And right. uh, it, it, it wasn't right, in my opinion. And, you know, a lot of the statements that he said that he was accusing, and, and I questioned one of them in the email. I mean, we showed video that contradicted a lot of the things that he said. And well, I... I don't know how he gets around that, but because but nobody calls w- him out, but but there's no repercussions. I mean, even us calling him out, calling him out, and and pointing where he lied on the show, it's not going to do anything to affect his his job and his salary that he might have or doesn't have or whatever the situation is. I mean, somebody would have to sue him. Somebody would have to report them to the AG's office or the ethics board. And we would have to just see if that actually went anywhere. Honestly, I don't think it would. I think they think they're untouchable, but I want you folks to remember, and we've still got over 120 people watching and we're just thrilled to have that many people watching for this. But just remember this, we called it. We said they were not going down that quietly. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we went further than that. I think we said that this charter commission would not be successful. It was going to be a wasted effort. And, you know, I think the whole plot here is to do nothing. But I think they had multiple. I think they had multiple, multiple, the anti-term limits people. They can say all they want that their participation was to do things that was in the best interest public and to help the public and work on their behalf that's not true they can say it all they want but their actions prove otherwise if that were true they would have been there tonight they would have been there and you know you 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 would not have made this all about term limits i mean the whole reason the commission was formed was because of term limits so our side we're there because that's what we wanted that's what we wanted and right. you, you made it about more than that. And now you're, you're taking your football and going home because right. you lost. And okay, so if that's the way it is, then that's the way it is. But you know what? The fight goes on. So, hey, I told y'all during the show, someone sent me a little bit of information. And I've got it on my screen to share okay. with you. There's two pages to it. This isn't all of it, but I think the first page basically – sums it up so this is from richard ray to i'll assume or guess Don't amanda know. nottingham and at least 12 more people yep okay and i i would assume it was responding to an email regarding the council chambers on thursday afternoon or not being available at 6 p.m to which to which preston was responding But he says, commission members, I want to take this opportunity to apologize to the group and to Mr. Friedley for the way I handled our interaction this morning at the Charter Commission meeting and immediately following the meeting. I stand by every word I said, but I would have liked to have delivered the words in a more professional and kind manner. You know, I think that's respectful of him to apologize, um, but he stands by everything that he said. Every word words matter words matter and none other than richard himself said that so you know we've shown a ton of contradictions here i mean i think Wes was tracking he got up to i know i last paid attention to it around 30 or something that he he was saying but um we showed a lot of contradictions and 
you know, y'all saw the video, you saw the emails, you saw the evidence yourself. I mean, I think, you know, it's up to you, the public, to draw a conclusion of, you know, what was correct and what was incorrect. And I, I don't, I, it was unproductive what happened today. And yeah, the rest they of literally folks, got zero accomplished except providing plenty of fodder for our show. And the fact that they did not, they all did not show up um, for the meeting indicates to me that that was their plan was to, sure. I'm sure they have multiple paths to kill the action of the charter commission, but it would appear that now one of their tax is to just not participate and not show up so that they can't finish out the remaining business. So, so that it, you know, supposedly can't be sent or drag it out past the deadline. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's, and, that's and we tax. And we can't reveal any details, but there is another arrow that has been loosed from their quiver. And so all of those things put together that we've been talking about, and then in the last couple of days, all of these things put together show you just how bad. It's not about the money. I mean, the salary for a city councilman is not that much at all. It's not about the money. It is strictly about the power. The good old boys network that we have harped on for 200 and something shows, they can't stand losing that power. Cannot let go of it. T cannot let go. 20 something years or more is not enough. And, you know, they'll do everything in their power to prevent it. And, and I disagree with you some about the money. I mean, if it, if it, wasn't about the money, they wouldn't have a problem disclosing, you know, their conflicts of interest. You know, they, they would have openly disclosed their conflicts, but I didn't hear any, I didn't hear anybody talking about their conflicts or potential conflicts. Why did they not disclose that to the public? I, you know, yeah, don't know. I, I, I mean, I know. I, I can't, I can't disagree with you on that. I, so cockroach of the week, Preston Friedley. Good Absolutely. job, Preston. I, I, I hat tip to you. I admire you for being under the pressure, keeping cool and taking those shots that you were taking. You did a superb job. Not many chairmen could keep their cool. And, uh, you know, granted it wasn't a meeting and you wasn't chairman, but, um, yeah, I think you handled yourself, uh, just a ton of respect for that. You handled yourself good. You, you didn't let him, uh, From you didn't let him rattle you and you didn't lose the cannons. From the lawyer, not lawyer, attorney, not attorney, private citizen, who knows, whatever he was. Anyway. All right. Anything else, Mr. Lowry? We still have well north of 100 people watching, and we appreciate each and every one of you and all the comments because that helps us keep going through the show is being able to see and read those comments. I know we don't get to every comment, but we try to pick out you know the ones that are relevant and, and stuff like that. And we appreciate all of you watching. A couple of quick housekeeping items. ProtonMail.com. If you want to send us email, we've gotten lots of Proton Mail here recently. Go to Proton Mail, make your free account, put no identifying information in it. Send us an email from that Proton Mail account. If you want to help donate to the show to keep these uh these shows going and all this great content and all these hours that Mr. Lowry and I myself. Uh, spend as well as our wives and family put up with. You can go donate some coffee money at bozierwatch.org or if you know somebody that wants to advertise on the show like Pelican Training, the Ferrises, of course, the Kadiana Mortgage is Duke and Kara over there or the Outdoor News, which is more content that we're doing. Let us know and we will reach out to you. How about that? Hey, when I first hey, hey and I wanted to, I wanted to throw out a, uh, uh, thank you to, uh, I, let me call it this. Let me go team term limits. We, while oh, the yes. show was going on, a lot of our viewers that watch the show frequently, they were out collecting signatures and yes. they hit a home run again tonight, collected a large number of signatures. I'm not going to say, cause I don't want to, it's getting into this competition thing between them about who can collect more. So I'm not going to go into that, but we're going to have to they did. give gift cards out or, or dinners or something as, as uh, contest prizes for who gets the most. Yeah. So they, they are, 
they did a good job collecting signatures and uh personally i want to thank y'all i've been out there the last two evenings with them and you know we are we are knocking the signatures out and it's coming and i would encourage anybody if you've seen anything that you feel motivated motivated about to, to try to change government especially your local city government you need to reach out to us and come help us be a part have a role in it i mean we welcome you and uh it, it's not hard um you just go talking to people at their door and you tell them the circumstances and they either agree with you or they don't and i would say probably 98 percent of the people they agree with you and yeah. it's it's not it's not a hard ask um you just got to go talk to them so like come help said, us like you said the last show they'll literally snatch the clipboard out of your hands to hurry up and sign it you dad damn right they do. all right i guess we're out of here folks we appreciate y'all watching again you know, uh, having this many viewers on a Tuesday evening during the summer and all that is outstanding. We hope you enjoy the content. I mean, the good old boy network, the city council, the police jury, they're the gift on giving. We'll be here every Tuesday night. Good night. Adios.